It's time to pack the movies. Hello, Johanna and Xander. How are you? How's it going, Tony? Hi, it's, Tony. It's going well. You know, it's uh, I believe it's going to be the 20th anniversary of Attack of the Clones. And we were thinking of doing a review for it. But I didn't have a funny gimmick for that one like we did with Emp <laughs> uh, with uh, Phantom Menace. And I didn't have time to come up with a new gimmick. We could have just filmed it at the beach. Talked oh, about God. the sand the entire time. <laughs> so people are like, hey, guys, why didn't you uh, just review Phantom Menace like legitimately? And it's like, because you'll just hear the same opinions you've heard for the last 20 something years. Yeah. Retcon this, retcon that, yeah, CGI or, or this. Like, yeah, just like uh, this was a bad choice. That's a toy commercial which was the point of our video um what are you talking about that was my personal collection oh, right <laughs> talk about my cup right here um a cup that someone won we no, got, i got a mail my cup because <laughs> <laughs> star wars is such a big franchise more than other movies it's been dissected and analyzed so if i were to go through the prequels like you're just gonna hear the same shit you usually hear like i'm not a like, like, what do you want to hear? I, I liked it when I was a kid, and then I got older and realized it wasn't as good as the original trilogy, and then I noticed all the flaws, and I learned about the business side, and I yeah, saw- Yeah, Clones was really bad. Or you had the opposite experience, where you grow up and everyone's telling you how bad the prequels are, and yeah. then you grow up and you're like, wait, I actually kind of like those. Those were yes, the Yes, or there's that. The flip uh, side. So I thought it'd be fun, because everyone's always bitching, what's the worst Star Wars movie? You know, it was <laughs> Phantom Menace for a long time, and then, uh, really? Yeah. And then Kathleen, I forgot to shave the hair on my neck, so I got to call her Kathleen Killity in this video. Uh, she ruined Star Wars, according to YouTube. It is so funny. The people who complain about her, like, they clearly had no idea who she was ahead of time. Yeah. She's been she's working like, with Spielberg for years. Yeah. They're like, why do they trust this to her? Like, wh where does she come from? It's like, she's worked with those. She's produced, like, amazing films and not so amazing films. Uh, <laughs> everybody. Yeah. So now there's the whole thing is like, the sequels are the worst. The prequels are the worst. Then you have, like, assholes that are like, the original truly was never great. It's like, you need to shut up. Uh, <laughs> so that's what we're going to do today. We're gonna figure out what is the worst Star Wars live action film. We're not doing the Clone Wars movie because that was just three episodes strung together and it's not very good. It's They're not even like chronologically the beginning of the Clone Wars, if I'm not mistaken. Like the, like the no. TV show, it's like somewhere in between. Yeah. It's like they gotta, yeah. shave, they gotta save ba Jabba's son. Yeah, R uh, Rada. We're gonna talk about what's what we think is the worst Star Wars movie. So we're gonna go through the movies, talk about them a little bit, and at the end, we've all made tier lists. At it's the my end. idea. Yeah. We both stole it. Yeah. We said that's a great idea. Mine's in black and white though. It might be a sticker as well. Who knows? I'm not totally sure. Oh you, yeah, don't print yeah. on the shipping thing. I got you. That, that. that was an accident. Whoops. Now you know. You gotta print on the upstairs printer. It's a I'm, pain in the ass. I'm gonna slap this on my door so that like, you can just always know. <laughs> just keep it forever. Don't talk about this bottom row. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. So I guess we'll. Go in, I guess, kind of order of release. Okay. Now, obviously, none of us are going to pick Star Wars as the worst one. So we'll talk about Star Wars Episode Four: A New Hope Special Edition. We were, we, we were like the prime audience for this, right? You're a little younger than us. Do you remember this coming out in theaters? How old are you? When were you born again? 97. Sorry. 97. All right, so literally the year it came out. Yeah. Never mind, you missed out on this. Oh, no, no, not 77, 97. Oh, you mean the special edition? No, when were you born? 97. 97. Yeah. That's when the special editions came God, out. Okay, wow. I was God, this VHS behind. box set is, you're just a few months older than, <laughs> oh, wow. than this. So you don't remember what this was like. So no. our generation, we get the VHS tapes finally. Like, they're on TV a lot. We're watching them. Uh, and then we find out they're making new ones. Yep. But to get you hyped up for the new ones, they're like, hey, we're putting the originals back in theaters, remastering it. Remember the commercial for it? Do you ever see this commercial? Uh, for It was like, But if you've only seen it this way, you haven't seen it at all. And it looked awesome. And then they're like, we're also adding a lot of stuff. 
because CGI was new at the time. Didn't Jim Cummings do the tr- do the do the voice for the trailer? It's like Hondo Anaka from the Clone Wars. He's he like might have. The Pooh. It's like for the last time, Star Wars yes. as you remember it. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have the one the VHS collection that came out right before that. I think. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. we have we don't have that one. Okay. We have the last one where it's just like this will be the last time you see it in this version. Gotcha. Uh, so this was a big deal. We were the target audience for this. They had just done Shadows of the Empire. Yeah. And that was Lucasfilm being like, can we just pour out a bunch of merch for a movie that doesn't even exist? Because it had a comic, video game, toy line, and it all did really well, and there was no movie. And they're like, well, people still love Star Wars, so they brought this out. And, like, I think we got to see Star Wars in theaters. Did you go to the theaters for these, the special editions? I'm pretty sure. I've seen, like, everything. Yeah. (laughs) And at the time, I thought all the stuff they added was cool because I was seven. Well, yeah, and it's like nice and shiny. And it's like, there's more and... Star Wars now. Yeah. Look at all the X-Wings and stuff. But as I've gotten older, I've realized, wow, this version kind of ruins the pacing of the original Star Wars. Have you seen the original cut of Star I assume you have. Yes, so yes. I got the, the VHSs. So I didn't really know what the special edition changes were until okay. I had friends that had the DVDs. Yeah. And I'm like, what is this? Like, yeah. what? Is that is this the change when they started adding, like, the scenes with Jabba and everything? Yes, that was the thing. They're yeah. like, we're going to add this scene of Jabba that we filmed. And it's like, yeah, but that scene sucked. And a lot of it repeated what was in the Greedo scene. So you hear the same yeah. dialogue twice. And we get Boba Fett in there. Just... Uh, yeah, and He's I think we, out. we I mean, pointed out in our Boba Fett, like yeah. Boba Fett in that movie, it, to this day, like his head is disappearing because of how they green screened him in. It's bizarre. Mos Eisley is supposed to be like a hive of scum and villainy and they hype it up and then it's just like, here's some wacky cute robots slapping each yeah. other around and they make it look like a fun place. And it's like, I think you missed the point of that. It's also anything with like computers. They added like more shiny buttons and screens and oh, stuff. God, and I'm like, yeah. Oh my God. There's like droids floating around. And, like, and, uh, yeah. 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 It's, it's distracting. Like star Wars is a great movie. It tells a nice, simple story. And now you're just cluttering the screen with shit. Like before it, I think it was like, um, an Astro mech like goes past the camera, but this time they added a Bronto. <laughs> Which was the ILM model for the Bronis, uh, Brachiosaurus just reshaped. Yeah. And it just covers the entire screen. It's like, why? Yeah, that's what I was going to say when you said distracting. It's the first thing I thought of. Yeah. Like, I'll be fair. There's some decent cosmetic changes. Like uh, the Jawas, like, junk. The Sandcrawler? Sandcrawler. Got you. They, they like, shot a miniature, like, on a nice sound stage of it coming down a hill. I'm like, all right, that actually looks pretty good. Yeah. So there's some decent changes. And then the special editions didn't stop happening. Like now, how Xander? Can you explain to me how did R two D two get in that cave uh, with all those rocks? That is a very good question. <laughs> Johanna, do you know how he got in no, the rocks? No, Xander, tell okay. me. <laughs> um, he just used his little arms that pop out, and he scooted them aside, and then he moved them right back. But it's like <laughs> he went back and like made changes to things that didn't need changes. Oh, the 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 crate dragon yeah. sound he makes. Woo! Yeah, woo! Like, what the really fuck is that? Yeah. And, uh, and of course we're going to talk about it. Okay. Han and Greedo. Ah. Oof. Like this is like So like when we're seeing this in the theaters, we're not like registering like how awful this was cuz we're just like, "Yay, I'm looking at Star Wars in a yeah, theater. Space, I don't care." I'm a child. Like But yeah, as, as you rewatch it, it's like, "Oh wow, it was really cool that Han just kind of shot him." Like, that was pretty cool because he's like an asshole and he lives with assholes. And the whole movie is about him learning to not be an asshole. So then they made it look like it was like self-defense. And it's like the worst. Boop. Boop. Uh, But then, like, they've rechanged it so many times. Now they're shooting at, like, the same time. And then the Disney Plus added McClunky. McClunky. Bet you have. McClunky. Spielberg was smart. He went back and added a bunch of bullshit to E.T., but he never took away the original E.T. He put them both in the same disc package. And now I don't even think he can get the special edition E.T. I think he just get the original one. Like he learned his lesson. But Lucas, for some reason, is like, you're not allowed to have this movie unless it's like an awful format. You cannot have a remaster of this movie. I remember I, I was just this week listening to like an interview with George Lucas. I think it was like at a university. It might have been Christopher Nolan might have been interviewing him. I can't remember, but he was recounting making the first Star Wars yeah. and feeling like he was literally just slapping it together, yeah. thinking that you wouldn't really be able to go back and watch it in 4K a hundred times and like pick apart every single frame. So he's like, they won't notice if we just make this a really like 
thrown together scene. And so I can definitely see like if he didn't feel like it was perfect, you start changing things in your mind and you want to like fix it. And I it. get it. I get it. And I get like wanting to cover up the cosmetic stuff. But like when you start making like weird character changes. Agreed. I mean, the movie's still like fine, but it's not the way it should be seen. And it's upsetting that you have to like hunt down bootleg version remasters of the original cut of Star Wars, uh, which is annoying. But yeah, that brings us to the next film. The Empire Strikes Back. The best one. Mm. Ar yes, arguably the best one. There's no ever. argument. And the least altered <laughs> too. Mm -hmm. Yes, this one benefit, like it doesn't benefit. Like I still don't like the changes they make. They changed the Emperor, right? And the Yeah, politics. to match. <laughs> To match Ian McDermott, because before it was like a woman with like monkey yeah. eyes superimposed Which over her. Which looked kind of goofy, yeah, yes. to be honest. Yes. But I mean, they're covered in darkness. It didn't really matter. And I get like wanting to match Ian McDermott. I understand. But the problem is they got like Revenge of the Sith Ian McDermott. And it's like, well, he doesn't really look like that in the next movie. Yes. I think at this point he was like forgetting like how movies work. Uh, so the beginning scene with the Wampa. The way it was shot originally, you know, the Wampa looked like shit. Mm. And they were like, all right, let's do like a bunch of creepy close ups and stuff to mm. film around it. And it's like super tense and everything. I'm like, wow, that was really effective. But then Lucas is like, I want to see the big snow monster. It's like, I'm oh, oh, look around. Yeah. Okay. So now we have a scene of like, it's just not as scary. Well, weren't the f like first three anyway, like basically like. George Lucas trying to do whatever the hell he wanted, but then mm. other people came in like, yes. no, you can't do yes. that. Yes, other people fought with him so. and like changed things. Like, uh, who's the, Lawrence Kasdan wrote mm. this one. Um, yeah, and it's such a better movie. It's such a good movie. It's such a good movie. And I remember people apparently said like they didn't like it when it came out. That doesn't surprise me. Because they wanted it to be like the first one, I guess, with like a big explosion at the end. That is a trend that we'll continue to see for every yes. single yeah. Star Wars yes. movie. <laughs> um, <laughs> One thing I like about the special edition, it did fix some of the old effects. So I talk about this a lot, uh, compositing like stop motion effects on blue screen. You either had a really hard, thick black line or yeah. it was see-through. Right. And like around this time, they were able to like go in and touch that up. So like you didn't get either and it just blends in nicely. That stuff, I don't mind the changes. For. And in Cloud City, they added a bunch of like matte paintings and stuff to mm. the background. Yeah, so like they when they're like, running around, it like yeah, feels they added more... windows with stuff, and that's not too bad. That didn't bother me too much. There's like ships flying around. You get the vibe. It's like a city yeah. Yeah. more. Yeah. But yeah. luckily, Cloud City. Yeah, Cloud <laughs> luckily City. they're indoors, so they they were limited on how much goofy shit they could add in there. Yeah. Not like Mos Eisley, where they're like, there's fucking droids flying and a dinosaur in the bag. It's like, all right, just, just have a ship go past the window. Who cares? <laughs> Um, yeah, Cloud City is fine. Uh, the Tamara Morrison voiceover stuff. Okay, that's not in the 97 one. Oh, okay. So we're... Yeah, but yes, then this... Oh, right, because the prequels hadn't come out. Yeah. yeah. Gotcha. Okay. So you should make the prequels to fit the previous films, not retroactively change the previous films to fix... to match the prequels that no one at the time was enjoying. <laughs> So yeah, they add a uh, Django Fett's voice. Quality of life change for sure. <sighs> and it's very jarring. Like for me, I remember like when I got the DVD because it wasn't on the VHS. I remember when I got the DVD, I was like, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> I'm like, what the f what is this? No disintegration. As you wish. No disintegration. As you wish. Why is he talking <laughs> like that? This is bizarre. Like, I know it's the guy from the prequels, but like Boba Fett didn't change his accent. Put Captain Solo in the cargo hold. <laughs> like that? Yes. This is a change that they did and then they went back and fixed it. Okay. It's on the VHS tape. So Luke learns that Darth Vader's his father. Mm. By the way, great twist. Great twist. Good twist. And it was not set up in the previous one. That's a lie. They he, got and he didn't kiss that. his dad before, so that's good. <laughs> he also didn't say, Luke, I am your father. No. I am your father. So Luke decides I'm not going to join the bad guy. I would rather sacrifice myself. And it's like a very noble sacrifice. So George must have watched it. Oh, George must have watched it and been like, wow, it must be really scary to fall down a <laughs> hole. So like in this first special edition, he goes Aah! the whole time he's falling down. And then I guess someone told him like, hey, 
that kind of ruins the context of the scene. So then he, it was one of the few things he added and then just took back out. He wasn't even screaming that bad when he found out that freaking Darth Vader's his yeah. father. It was just like, no. And this one is like, ah! <laughs> and where does a redacted change like that happen? Is George like sitting there on his couch watching the movie being like, oh, shit. <laughs> and then well, he, actually probably. Or is someone being like, they're watching it with him and they're yeah. like, you should really just take that out. I don't know. <laughs> That's not good. <laughs> But as it stands, uh, Empire Strikes Back is still the best. I love what they did with Yoda. Dagobah is really cool. Hoth is really cool. I love the Hoth battle. And the AT-ATs are like my favorite Star Wars thing. Like, I love those Dude, things. I, I wish instead of the like new Disney stuff, they would stop going to Tatooine and go to fucking Hoth. But yeah, one of the things that actually really works that has never worked again in this franchise is the romance in this movie. Mm. Uh, between Luke... Uh, well, Luke and Leia. Han and Leia. <laughs> I mean. Yeah. The romance is actually really good in this movie. It's like, it. it's kind of funny. That it works. Yeah. I like how they set it up in the first one. Where it's like, hey, the hero is not really going to get the girl. It's like the supporting character gets the girl because the hero's got other shit to deal with. It's like, a, oh, my God. Um, the check is in the mail movie. Oh, my God. Help me. Big Trouble Little Big Trouble, China. Yeah, where it's like flipped, like Kurt Russell's not the main character. Have you ever seen Big Trouble Little China? Oh, Ooh, man, that's a good one. That's a good one. <laughs> so Empire Strikes Back, probably the best. I don't think we're going to pick that as the worst. And even the special edition, as annoying as some of the changes are, it didn't, like, destroy yeah. the movie. And then Return of the Jedi. Move closer! Um, I think this, that one drags the most, I think. Yes. Uh, of all of them. I like uh, the opening set piece. I like the ending set piece. Yeah, that one is rough with the middle section. And then, like, a lot of it is Harrison Ford's fault because he was like, I don't want to come back. So that's why they froze him in the previous movie. Because they weren't sure if he was going to come back or not. And then they're like, all right, we're bringing him back. And it's like, well, find something for him to do. And it's like, well, shit. He's like, like that one gif of him. Yeah, like yeah it's like, uh, <laughs> I guess he can hang out on the teddy bear planet for a bit while everyone else does cool shit. That's the, so Return of the Jedi is like the origin for the prequels where it has too many. And again, other reviewers have said this, which is why I'm not doing a full review on a lot of those. It has too many endings. Like it, it has too many plot lines going on. And then- Also, the, wasn't it a mess behind the scenes for this too? A little bit, I'm yeah. I'm pretty sure this was like a hot mess I mean, I would have loved if David Lynch directed this. He was offered it and that would have been bizarre. Instead he did Dune. Um, yeah, so there's too many things going on. There's a lot of scenes where characters sitting and talking. That'll we'll see more of that in the next three films. Uh, and then this is where they start getting carried away with the uh, the secret relationships, where it's like Leia's Luke's sister. Like she it she is your sister. They just made out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But then but then there's it's bizarrely written because Luke will be like, "Tell me about your mother, your real mother." And it's like, and as the audience, you're like. Okay, so Leia had a mother, but she also had a real mother. I was not. But also, I Leia remembers her real mother because she looks so sad, and yeah. it's just like, and then you watch. Yeah, I can't <laughs> wait for the Disney Plus series to come out to like retcon that, just so they can fix that. Line. Yeah, because I'm sitting there. I remember being I as like a kid. how they did with the Clone Wars show. Yeah, yeah. Her <laughs> being as a kid, I was just like, okay, well, so Leia had a mom, but that wasn't her real mom. But she remembers her real mom, but Luke doesn't, and neither of them remember the real dad. It was very bizarre. Yeah, and they get carried away in the next one or like the return. next three um, i don't like return of the jedi at all you don't like it at all i mean Even like there's some parts or whatever like i love the end battle and everything the luke not the ewok battle i'm yeah. talking palpatine and the luke storyline is really good yeah. where it's just like is he going evil because he's wearing black and he it's almost like the sequels do the same thing or i just want to watch the Ky the ray and kylo stuff yeah. the entire time yeah, yeah they really struggle with the supporting characters in that series speaking of that romance oh mm. god uh, but yeah, so the whole thing is like Luke really wants his fa wants to redeem his father and save his father, but will he go to the dark side? So you're stuck in that yep. whole area there. And then it's just like, will the rebels, did they find the Empire like vulnerable because the Death Star is not fully complete? And then you find out it's like a trap. It's a trap! Which is really cool. And there was even another subplot that they deleted with uh, Jer Jarad, the, uh, the Imperial like lieutenant or whatever. Okay. He has a couple scenes with Vader. He's the one who's like, well, we'll double our efforts when he finds out the Emperor's coming. He had a whole character arc Okay. where he's like working with the Emperor. He gets into a fight with Vader and Vader like straight up chokes him and oh, the Emperor's guards oh, almost fight wait, him. Yeah. I remember hearing about that. But he's a guy who realizes like 
what was that old uh, British sitcom was it on BBC where they did that skit with the Nazis? And they're like, are we the baddies? He oh. has he has that moment where like at the end, like the emperor is like, hey, uh, if they destroyed the satellite dish on the planet, I want you to blow up the planet. He's like, but emperor, our people are down there. And he's like, you fucking do he's what like, I say. I don't care. And it's one of those like where he like real like that's a cool scene. But they were smart to cut that out because they're like, all right, now we have too much going on. Right. Yeah. Which they did not learn from. Um we could have seen what like the Imperial Guards do and stuff because they just kind of like hung out there and got Legos, yeah. got Lego sets and stuff. But they didn't. The Imperial Guards. All right, so there's a great comic called Tag and Bink Are Dead. Yes. Have you ever heard of it? Yes. Have you ever heard of this? Mm-hmm. Uh, so if you don't know, there's a play called Rosencrantz and Guildenstern Are Dead, and it's about the supporting characters in Hamlet from their point of view. So they made a book called Tag and Bink Are Dead. It's like they were there for all the scenes in Star Wars, and I love that the one issue is they're the Imperial Guards. Because when you watch, the elevator doors are there, and then the Imperial Guards go behind it. Right. And in the comic, you realize they're, they're like, like, I oh. thought there was a door in the back. So they're just <laughs> so they're just sitting there awkwardly because they're too embarrassed to go back out while everything is happening. You never know. Maybe there was a Sith holocron that would lead you to a, to, a, to the other planet, <laughs> that next <laughs> Uh But the Emperor is great in this. Yeah. Because if you're going to try to start humanizing Darth Vader, you have to put another big bad. Right. And they like nailed it with the Emperor and Ian McDermott is great in it. Uh, he, I swear to God, he just has the time of his life as that character. Yeah. Like, he really does. Oh, my God. Even in Rise of Skywalker, I was yeah. like, I was happy to see him. That's back. where I was like, you know what? Okay, yeah. <laughs> but talk about the origin of the problems. This yeah. is when they were like, well, we have to make things specifically for toys. Ewoks. It was supposed to be Wookiees. Or specifically for other movies. Yeah. So this is for like George wanted to merchandise and make things a little bit more child friendly to push more merch. So we get the Ewoks. More merch. More merch. More merch. You said more merch. I, my <laughs> sinuses are clogged. Leave Ooh. me alone. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, Star Wars is kind of always for kids to a degree, but yeah. Yeah, but if you think about it, like, well, it's one of those things where kids were able to handle more stuff back then. So you got hands getting cut off and stuff. And yeah, like I, I fucking grew up. I, I went to the theater to see Starship Troopers. It's like a rated R movie with like bug hunting and people getting ripped off and boobs. And like, yeah, there's no kid today is going to go see a movie like that. <laughs> yeah. People are like calling for Doctor Strange to be rated R. Like what? Those idiots don't know how the MPA works. The MPA has always been flawed. They've always favored directors over like right. other people and try to screw other people. Like yeah. they, they have been inconsistent. You can find PG movies from like the sixties with nudity in them. Yeah. Yep. Like it's so, they, they, it's the worst it's rating the system. Place. Yeah. So, um, return of the Jedi, the Ewoks, people really hate them. I didn't like them for years. Now I don't care. Uh, <laughs> they're fair. We have new enemies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like this one gets screwed over hard by the special edition. So right away, C-3PO and R2-D2 go to Jabba's palace. But I guess the door wasn't big enough. This is in the most recent, the 2011 Blu-ray. He just made the door gigantic. Why? Can I? Jabba can get in. <laughs> the door was already big enough for Jabba. What about the Rancor? Like, can the Rancor yeah, not get in there or something? I don't know. There's like, no reason to make like the door so big. It's like a little doggy door for the... So here's, Maybe if Jabba had a lady over or something. Yeah. So here's Never the thing. Know. Yeah. Never know. Here's the thing with the original. It's like, <laughs> so George apparently always wanted like the dance number yeah. with Sly Snoodles and the band, but they couldn't get the puppet uh. to work right. So they were like, you know what? Maybe we don't need this scene. We'll have her in the background. It'll be her and Max Rebo and... That'll be it. You know, they they never ended up adding. They, they had it on set like this guy that was covered in LEDs. Yes, and, and just, it looked terrible. It, and they just never ended up putting the guy in the movie. Uh, Phil Tippett tweeted about it. Okay, He's like, yeah, we did a camera test and we all agreed it looked not, terrible. Not good. <laughs> um, so now George is like, well, now I got to go back and add in the fucking dance number. Jedi Rocks. What did you think about Jedi Rocks? I don't think any of us like it. I was on board until he turns. He goes to the camera and he's like, ah, he's all like nah. that's where it was like, all right, all right. Because I, I remember watching like, breaking the fourth wall. Even when I was like an idiot and loved all this shit, I remember even me was I was just like, it looked like shit. Yeah, I'm like that doesn't look too good. That looks pretty bad. Mm-hmm. And it like ruins the whole mood of that scene where it's like you're in like a gangster's dungeon, like people are being fed, like a woman is being fed to a monster, which then they. They Ula. added new scenes of her down there, but like 
It's just like, what's going to happen to me? But you still don't see her get eaten, so it's like, I don't think we need to see her down there. We already you know she's hear, down you, there. Yeah, you yeah. hear her, uh, like, yelling, right? Yeah, but yeah. in the original cut, she just falls, yeah, and you hear and her yelling. Yeah, that's it. But then the special yeah, then edition, they there, show the then, reaction yeah. to her, which I thought was bizarre. By the way, let's talk about this escape plan. So the plan is everyone gets captured. And then at the Sarlacc pit, <laughs> at the right moment, R2 will shoot Luke's new lightsaber to him. They had a lot riding on this plan. I don't know why they thought this would work. Everything had to go wrong before it could go right. <laughs> yeah, literally, like th that was like a multi-stage plan. Like that was like. Don't worry about it. <laughs> you know what? It would have been cool. I know they wanted to reveal the green lightsaber when he like first clicks it on. Yeah. But the yeah. deleted scene where he's building the lightsaber yeah. and putting the crystal in there. I mean, come on. I mean, that's kind of cool. But like, you could also just like even as a kid, I'm like, oh, I guess he made a new lightsaber. I didn't really care how he did it because I didn't think it was that important. Uh, it's just a cool moment. Yeah, yeah, it's like cool it. moment. yeah, it was just cool. Yeah, so they get to the Sarlacc pit and we get a uh, CGI beak. Yeah. This really smooth looking CGI beak. And I thought the beak was always stupid. I'm like, why does it? Why did they yeah, add a beak? Yeah, why can't it just be a giant hole in teeth? Yeah, well, I, I don't know why they felt the need to like add the beak, and especially when it looks really bad. Maybe it could be a little bit more expressive. Yeah. Uh, you could sing part of the song too. Yeah, remember. but also <laughs> now like, because people are like, Boba Fett survived. I'm like, well, I don't know. That beak ate him. I don't know how he survived that. I still don't know how he survived that because in Book of Boba Fett, the beak is alive. Uh, so I thought that was, but that was like a needless change. There's a lot of needless changes in beak this. Beak of Boba Fett. The beak of Boba Fett. <laughs> uh, Thank you for yeah. that laugh. Thank you. Huh? Thank you for You're laughing welcome. at that. You're welcome. I appreciate that. So they eventually get to Endor. <laughs> we all know what happens on Endor, but the most recent Blu-ray, the Ewoks blink now. Oh, yeah. They went from having dead, cold eyes <laughs> to now just having dead, cold eyes that blink. Like, if you're going to make a blink, try to make the rest of their face, like, with more Something, expression. Because yeah. now, that because before I'm like, wow, that's a guy in a really creepy suit. I never for once believed that these are real creatures. But now that they blink, I'm like, like this looks no like a doll that's... Like, eyebrow, like, no, it's literally just... And they just like they yeah. just like open mouth breathe all yeah. the time. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're very creepy. I don't know weird. why they thought they were gonna go all in on this. Well, even in the Ewok movies, looking at that one freaking gift that you sent me this morning, I'm just sitting there like, oh god. Um, I don't like the fast one. No, the fast, the fast one's <laughs> he's weird. not an Ewok. We're getting to those. Don't worry. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah. So the Ewoks is where a lot of people like fall off of this. Um, but it has a really cool speeder bike chase in the forest. Yeah. That stuff's really cool. Um, yeah, then we get, uh, what else? Yeah. Oh, the ending. Darth Vader screaming no. No! Someone pointed out, they're like, this is like, you're basically saying you don't trust your audience to know what's going on. But it were, I was never confused by that scene. Were you guys? It's nope. like, oh, wow, Darth Vader. He's he's looking at his son and the emperor, realizing that you know he's wrong, and he has to like make up for everything. I got it. We all got it. What we if did they, oh, sorry. What if they added like see like what if they added like through the eyes, you could see tears and like him crying and get more emotional. I don't know. Someone once did a uh, fan edit where it's uh, the song from Rocky IV when when Apollo Creed dies and Rocky is remembering the previous three no. films. But it's like, it cuts to like Darth Vader and it's like showing the prequels and then that's what makes him throw the Emperor. Stupid. Uh, and that would have been better than no. No. <laughs> the two no's, it's two. <laughs> it's like, no, we got it. Why did they do that? It's so fucking stupid. And then they took his eyebrows off. <laughs> they they removed yeah. they removed Darth Vader's eyebrows. Bacta is great for growing back hair. It's yeah. They it's removed good. his eyebrows and changed his eye color. Do you know why? Aiden to Christian fit in said. more with the prequels. It's like yeah, but couldn't you have just made the prequels fit in with this? I don't think Anakin needed his entire body on fire. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> Some pretty gnarly eyebrows, though. <sighs> it's could have trimmed them. Speaking of prequel editions, they put Sebulba in Jabba's palace. That's funny as shit. That's uh, hilarious. Maybe it's not Sebulba. Maybe it's another it's one of those. I think it's Sebulba. But it's just walking around. It's like, why? Oh, and then before the, the Sarlacc scene, they thought it was important to cut to a desert of just like a bunch of Banthas walking. And then cut out more and show like all these banthas horribly green screened into the desert. It's really bad. That scene didn't need to exist. No, we get it. We were going to the desert like because because the blue screen in the original Return of the Jedi is pretty bad. Mm -hmm. So now you have bad modern green screen cutting to bad 
80s blue screen in that scene. Like, this is just all around bad. And then I fucking hate the ending of Return of the Jedi's special edition. <sighs> Hating Christensen. Why? I liked that change growing up. What? Yeah. I thought it made sense when I was little, but like. Well, it was little. Like, 2004. Well, you were 14. I don't know if that's I was little. Li Little. Because that's not in Littler. the 90s. I'm still a child. One, Littler. I'm still a child. Okay. Uh, but I took it as, oh, it's when Anakin was like good. But then I'm like, but technically he was good at the end of the movie. Jedi. Yeah. So like, so, I don't, now I don't understand it. Before, so before I was trying to like justify it, but now I'm like, wait. That before it's the sense. actor, I forget who played the unmasked. Vader. Yeah, it's because the there's a. I have David Prowse's autograph on that DVD. Oh, is it David Prowse? Uh, James Earl Jones does the voice. Mm -hmm. There was another one who did the sword fighting. Oh my god, I cannot remember. And his I name. can't remember the the guy who did his face. Uh, but it was like him without the birds to show like, oh, you know, he made it to the light side. Which I personally, I think if you participate in genocide, you're not gonna make it to the light <laughs> side. Uh, you you can. Uh, it was good you took care of the Emperor because he's he the was chosen the bad guy. one. But like, I don't think you're going to get a like, you don't really get redeemed from that. You did a horrible thing. And then that's where we get the whole like all the Jedi have to wear the sand robes that Obi-Wan Kenobi wore. And it's like, when did that become a uniform? Like Luke's not wearing anything remotely like that. I like that the Obi-Wan Kenobi series is like putting him in like not Jedi yeah. outfits for a little bit. Maybe yeah. he was wearing it for a special day in A New Hope. <laughs> now, uh, what ending do you like more? Yub Nub? Or the John Williams, like, redoing it with the music cutting to everyone in the galaxy. Oh, sh I like Yub Nub. I like Yub Nub. Nub Nub Nub. Which one do you like more? We so free! <laughs> <laughs> so the 97 one, they're yeah, showing the rest of good, the galaxy celebrating. <laughs> Again, most Eisley, the hive of scum and villainy, they're, they're really happy for throwing off fireworks. What if they like weren't celebrating? They were just Peace. like, yes. Yeah. What if Moose Eisley, that was just a gunfight that was going on and just looks like celebrating? It probably was. Yeah. But then like, I remember in 97, they show Coruscant. And I remember that was like the first time we saw Coruscant and like yeah. the Empire, the Emperor statues being pulled down. Um, yeah, it's funny how like the Empire, they're like, all right, well, we're done. It's like, okay, I think there's a, there was there not a chain of command in place? Um, and also how they know they won from the, the explosion in the sky. They're like, oh. <laughs> they, they got a call. Oh, true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pro probably stand out. I don't know. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I, think, I think they won. So they did that. And I was like, okay, whatever. I get it. I get it. And the new music, although I like the up nub, but then the 2004, they're like, well, we got to show Naboo. We got to show Naboo. <laughs> and look, it might not be Jar Jar, but they have a Gungan <laughs> going, we suffer. <laughs> I I miss Yub Nub a lot, yeah. but uh, you know what? I do like that they went back to the other planets. <laughs> Tie it all together. Even the prequel planets? Oh, yeah. Dude, when I first saw that and I heard the Weasa Free, I'm talking Weasel. like, this is like full on like belly laughing. <laughs> yeah. Because at that point, he's, I don't know, it's like, no fucking way. At that point, he's doing it out of spite. Yeah, like, there's no way. To, there's no way he to. did that for like integrity. He had to. <sighs> <sighs> so that's. So we've done the original trilogy. Again, <laughs> where we focus on the negative, we focus on the special edition. Why don't you like Return of the Jedi? Never liked it. I just felt like too much was going on. I hate Ewoks. Like, it just... Mm. Too much was going on. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, anyway, let's get into the... <laughs> <laughs> before the prequels. <laughs> now, oh, so you don't like Ewoks. That's funny, because the next two movies are Caravan of Courage and The oh, Battle for me. Endor. So All right, here's my two notes. I'll come back after you guys. I have a lot less to say about uh, Burl these. Ives, narrator, fuck yeah. Uh, the part where the monster dude squishes the Ewok because he thought he was in the uh, little bucket thing or yeah. whatever, fucking hilarious. Everything else, I really do not give a fuck. <laughs> okay. So you guys have never seen this before. No. Uh, you've only, you've only ever heard of him, right? Yeah, I'd only heard of it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I guess I'm one of those few. Like, I obviously didn't watch it live because I wasn't alive yet. But uh, I was one of those kids that, like, scrolling through channels i'm like wait ewok is this return of the jedi and then i notice it's like something new i'm like this is a new star wars thing that i didn't know existed so i watched it i'm like cool and then i'm like where's all the star wars stuff like uh they gonna have laser guns there's the lightsaber is darth vader around like what is this yeah. so yeah he really wanted to merchandise the ewoks 
obviously. So he, he greenlit these two movies. Joe Johnson worked on it. You know, your favorite director of the best Jurassic Park movie, Jurassic Park 3. Oh, really? I didn't even realize. Oh, yeah. Joe Johnson, he made Boba Fett. Uh, Joe Johnson was big in the effects for the first uh, trilogy. Actually, when the um, if I remember right, I think it's Joe Johnson. Let me know if I'm wrong. I love being told when I'm wrong. When the Millennium I love Fal- telling you you're wrong. When the Millennium <laughs> Falcon is being entered into the the Death Star, there's like two stormtroopers on the outside walking. They're both Joe Johnson because he only had one outfit. He like green screened himself and composited in. So they made these movies, and of course, this led into the animated series Ewoks, which we're not covering. Um, so I rewatched them for the first time, and you guys are like, "Oh," and I'm just like, "These aren't as bad as I remember them being." Uh, bad. <laughs> you remember them worse? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, but I'm watching it, and like the first, so the first one has the narrator, who was his name? Fries. We're alive. Like, you, you shouldn't like any like Frosty or. Okay, so that is that him. is his yeah. voice. That okay. is him. I recognize him. Okay. Is that <laughs> okay. So it's about a family that crashes. The parents go missing, and the kids have to go look for them, and they're. They're teaming up with the Ewoks to find their parents who were kidnapped by a giant bull man thing. I like the first one, I think, of the two. Yeah. A little yeah. bit better. Apparently, that giant bull dude is in uh, Force Unleashed in the trophy room. I That's have to check. funny. I have to check. So, yeah, they're teaming up with the Ewoks to fight this bull man. And it's pretty simple, but, like, this feels like someone just had a fantasy script. Yeah. Because, so Star Wars it's is a like... a slight sprinkling of Star Wars. Star mm-hmm. Wars is sci-fi fantasy, but this one's leaning a little too on the fantasy side. Because mm-hmm. they use, like, magic at one point. I'm like, well, mm-hmm. is this, like, the Force? Yeah. Or is this different magic? The two-legged things that they walk, th- those show up in The Mandalorian Season 1. The, oh, okay. Yeah. It's kind of funny. Like They're, like, well, from that. So ILM is still involved with this. Look, it's not the best effects, but compared to other made-for-TV, th- these movies are shot well. Yeah, I'll like give it, them that. if you watched Return of the Jedi and you said, "I want more Ewoks," this is a good movie to watch. I don't think anyone ever so said that. Children, so yes. children. This is literally made uh, for children. But did even children? I was Wicked's weird, dude. Yeah, w- Wicked is weird. Um, <laughs> but yeah, and Wicked kind he, Wicked is learning to talk in this. We'll talk about the continuity with the next one. Uh, but the ki- the problem with this is continuity the- problems in my Star Wars. Yes. <laughs> so the problem with this is like the boy is the lead in the first one, and he's awful. They're mm. both awful. Yeah, but he's really bad. Yeah, he's a little hammed up. the the, lo- the little girl does a better job than you'd expect her to do for being yeah. how young she is. But yeah. like you know. Yeah, but he's he's not good. He's really it's, not good. It's like it's like bootleg Mark Hamill, but he's like yeah yeah eight. That's Years apparently old. why he got cast, because he looked like Mark Hamill yeah. a little bit. Kind of, not really. I uh, see the resemblance. And when I was watching, I was like, yeah. kind of looks like him. But I, but you know. So they were smart with having a narrator, because the Star Wars holiday special, there's a lot of scenes just the Wookiees talking, and it's not subtitled. So it's just... Rah, rah. <laughs> so the, you luckily, can understand Wookiee? Truly immerse no, yourself. I don't. Uh, so luckily they had the narrator like, this is Deej. He's looking for his sons. There they are. It's like, okay, thank you, narrator. I'm <laughs> now aware of who's related to who and what. Uh, this is, what is it? Low Gray is the mystical one. I had his action figure growing up. They're like, he is teaching them magic and giving them magic items. They had action figures for these guys? For the, well, uh, the gray one that looks like a shaman and okay. wicked. They're in Return of the Jedi. Oh, so that's why I the had their one. toys. Oh, right. Yeah. Yes, I yeah. had their toys too. Okay, yeah, I forgot yeah. the names. Um, yeah. So the the, the effects with the bull man are, are kind of cool, like the blue screen and stuff. Yeah, it's not terrible. Like the movie's like this movie is like okay. It's just kind of pointless. Like, is this the one with the wing glider? I yeah. Don't yeah. Well, they both have a wing glider, but this ah, one has shoot. it in the beginning. Is this, what about the one where she like falls onto the wing glider, pierces the hole through? That's, that's the next. Okay. Right? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they even show an Ewok dying, and it's sad. They love doing that. Yeah, they did that in Return of the Jedi. That was sad. Yeah, that really was. really sad. It's the horrors of war. This is a kid's movie, but they they don't want you to know the horrors of war. Um, yeah, so rewatching it, I'm like, oh, this is gonna be really bad. It's gonna really suck. And then watch it, I'm like, I'm having a good time. This is fine. This is fine. Johanna's stupid. This is fine. And then I put the second one on. And I went, oh, <laughs> oh, this is the one that I remember being bad. <laughs> Rita Repulsa shows up. Yes. Uh, so, yeah, what the hell? By the way, 
Uh, our Alien 3 review is on the way. This is the Alien 3 of its day, where it just kills all of the characters. Yeah, the what the hell? The brother has 33 seconds of screen time. You never even really see him die, so I think there were- You don't see the mom die either. She's kind of just- like, No, and actually, you don't even really see yeah, the she... dad die. He just sends her off. You see, the only- you see, I was gonna say, you see the little thingy. The thing that their life indicator goes off. But like, I think they were planning on doing a third one. That's why there's no on-screen deaths. But since they never made a third one, literally the boy drags his mother into a hut and then there's a big explosion. And then the dad's dying slowly. He's like, just get out of here, daughter. I'm Run, shot. Look back. <laughs> and you're just supposed to assume that he's slowly bleeding out. It's like, this is horrifying. Well, don't they come and grab him and shake him around and be like, well, what do you know? Yeah. yeah. So apparently George Lucas before this watched some old, I think it might've been a Western movie called Heidi or something. And he was just like, we're going to do that. It's going to be about the little girl this time. And I she's orphaned. Heidi. I've seen Heidi, I think. It's an old movie, but yeah. yeah. So he's like, he's going to be, she's going to be orphaned and go on an adventure with the Ewoks. And they were probably like, well, that's kind of mean to your other supporting cast, but okay. Um, but then I guess they were like, wait a minute, do we have a narrator? And I assume the narrator was in another hut and he got blown up because <laughs> there's no narrator, but how will I know what's going on with the Ewoks? No problem. Wicked can talk now. We help you. Yeah. I want to point out from what I could tell, because I was originally going to be like, Xander, it was kind of messed up that the Rebels didn't arm the Ewoks on their way out. Like, they helped them defeat the Empire. You think they give them modern weapons and stuff? So that's kind of mean of them. Or was it one of those things, like, if we arm them now, they're going to be our enemies later. Like, the Ewoks are going to come back. <laughs> did, did Warwick Davis do the voice of the of Warwick? I of, doubt it. Uh, I doubt it. Wicked? I doubt it. Uh, so I was like, yeah, it's kind of weird. They're still using all this primitive stuff. They didn't, like, help them out. But then I look up. This is in between five and six. That's wild. So That's I'm like, crazy. why is Wicket not talking in the next one? In the Return of the Jedi. It's fucking bizarre. He simply forgot. Death sticks. <laughs> Sleaze Bagano gave him some death sticks. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so rethink your life. This one is clearly, <laughs> by the way, the Rita Repulsa girl, she played the Reverend Mother in the original Dune. And then Carlin Strickland is uh, the main bad guy in this, the big tall dude. He's Lurch from the yeah, Adam's I was gonna Family say Lurch, movies. Yeah. And uh, the giant from Twin Peaks. And they're a race of monsters whose lips can't close. Like Cad Bane. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then they got Wilford Brimley in this. They roped Wilford Brimley into this. I feel like it's how they did it with the Star Wars special, the holiday special. They mm -hmm. got like, uh, what was it called? Art Carney and Harvey... Harvey so Harvey Corman? Whatever. They got these or and B. Arthur. I yeah, they got these Arthur. old actors like, hey, you know Star Wars? My kids love Star Wars. Well, you could be in the Star Wars thing. Cool. Is it one of the movies? Yeah. <laughs> so they got Wilford Brimley in this. Do I get a blaster? Do I get lightsaber? Yeah, and he's just you get like soup. He's, you, get, you get soup. You get soup. Yeah, he's old man who lives in the woods because he crashed there this friend years prior. And he lives with the fast thing. What was that? It was not an Ewok. I, it looked like a. What was his name? It began with a T. Melted, a melted Ewok to me. Yeah, it really it did weird. look like they put a B Ewok in a microwave. And they're like, you're kind of an Ewok, but yeah. he's very fast. <laughs> you're kind of an he Ewok. He looks like a monkey. Yeah, yeah. And like the whole thing is like, all right, well, the bad guys want their power source, which is just a battery for their ship. And the witch is involved. And it's the, the girl can turn into a bird. Is that something the force. I assume. By the way, I looked up. Apparently, she's one of those, like, uh, the witches of Dathomir. She's in part of that sect. No, -uh. I'm sure that was something that was added to Wikipedia decades oh, after sure. the fact. Because you remember, those are witches that use the force kind of like magic. Right. That's one cool thing I like that the modern expanded universe does. Like, in Rebels, they're like, yeah, other civilizations have the force, but they use it differently. Right. They call it other things. It's kind of cool. This one's really bad. I do like that this is the first time you see, uh, I think this is the first time you see the little the little fire sprites that they use oh. to, like, fight the stormtroopers in Battlefront 2. <laughs> so, like, they're well, no, That was in the previous one, that the was. little sprite. I yeah. forgot to bring it up. But, like, yeah. they decanonized them, and then they brought them back for the game because they're like, how do we have a game mode with Ewoks using weapons? But they don't actually shoot people like <laughs> so they so they just that's how they that's how they do it let's let's move on let's yeah, pretend let's pretend this one didn't happen thank you yeah, i no. still think the first one's okay 
It first is, one's okay. It's a thing. It's it exists. exists. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. Literally. So, it's so Star shit. Wars. Yeah. Star Wars goes away. <laughs> they do the special editions, and then in 1999, it came back. But I will try to say some positives right now. The CGI was terrible, but they were still using some miniatures that looked really, really good. Mm -hmm. Uh, so they were still building sets, like real sets, and the few sets we saw were really, really good. Costumes and makeup was great. I think Jar Jar looks good. Uh, yeah, he yeah, does. He, he For looks, the time. Yeah, he yeah, does. Yeah, he does. He's looking <laughs> yeah, good. Yeah, he does. <laughs> yeah, buddy. <laughs> he looks better than anyone else who was attempting a full CGI character at that point was doing. Like, you think about, like, the mummy and the mummy. Mm. Like, yeah. if he was that the whole time, that movie. Like, luckily, they made him a human at some point. Um, but, like, he would be beaten out by... Gollum, like a few years later. Yeah. Uh, so there are some positives. The music's really nice. I like some. Williams is always good. I like the on location stuff. Uh, it was like some of it still felt kind of Star Warsy, but the script sucks, and all the characters suck, and Obi Wan sucks. I'm sorry, he's written Damn. so poorly in this one. Why they made Quake Qui Gon Jinn? I don't know. I know why. Why? Because he was meant to be the crux upon which Anakin became bad or good. Because if he had Qui-Gon, he wouldn't turn to the dark side. Didn't I say that in a review? Not necessarily that, but I basically said that like, he I probably exists something because... like that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I said, like, not the yeah. same exact thing, but... Yeah. But, uh, like I said, this is where a lot of the problems from Return of the Jedi get... Amplified. Amplified. So now all the Jedi dress like Obi-Wan. Because that's what we think Jedi look like. Because that was the first Jedi we saw. Uh, there's weird rules that they're adding to the universe. Yeah. M count. Oh God, the midichlorians. Like Asta, they're off the charts. I hated that. I hated that. That's so fucking stupid. Uh, how much religion do you have in your? Yeah, blood? how much religion do you have in your blood? <laughs> Apparently not more than Yoda. <laughs> uh, yeah, but Yoda has so much religion. There's no main character, and other people pointed that out. There's literally no main character. Mm -mm. To argue it's little Jake Lloyd. He doesn't show up to what, like 40 so, minutes yeah, into the movie? Oh, wait. He shows yeah, up like, way too late to be the main character. Mm. The Jedi are kind of uninteresting and bland. The, the The queen is hidden for most of the movie. You're not even sure who she is. Kira Knightley. Yeah, she's Kira Knightley, turns out. That's good. Yeah, the, like the virgin birth thing. Are you an angel? <sighs> so, Phantom Menace, what do you not like about this movie? Uh, I think it's perfect. <sighs> It's flawless. Um, you, you saw my review about it already. Yes, like, it's yes. Xander, flawless. what do you not like <laughs> about this movie? You guys both did a great job covering it. Go watch the review if you have not yes. already. Um, <laughs> what do you not like about it? What do I not like about it? I think it is really slow. I think there are a lot of boring setup things. Which is actually in the prequels. beginning. I'm like, oh my God. They did a thing where they were like, we're going to put so much crap on the screen. There's that famous clip of the producer, Rick McCallum, being like, every image is so dense. I love Rick McCallum's yeah. parts of like the behind the scenes. Yo, thing. God, yeah. So like, they thought like, oh, we're going to have all the CGI and all these special effects covered. And they thought that would like make up for stuff. It's was like, yeah, but it's boring. He's like, I think we went a bit far in a few places. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then people bring up the older interview where George Lucas said, like, a movie, like, a special effect is a special effect, but you need a good story. Like, you can't go the opposite way. And then he did that. And it's one of those things where it's a prequel, but, like, you have to watch the original trilogy to know what's going on. Wasn't he, like, trying to, like, weren't they trying to, like, pay the Trade Federation to, like, mess with the Naboo people so that uh, Palpatine could, like, rise to power? I guess, but they didn't know he was Palpatine. So, like, how did they get in league with him? Ah, yes. And what exactly were they stopping the shipment to Naboo trade. of just trade but she's like my people are dying it's like no they're not we never even see them like yeah. what the fuck is going on yeah it's just not very well thought out Darth Maul is a toy toy ad they put him on everything and he just does fucking nothing is one line of dialogue uh, Save the Clone Wars and the Rebels, I'll tell you what. Or he, he's TV actually show. a character in Great those. Great in those. He's actually a character in those but in this it's like okay well he looks cool that's it. Now let's talk about the Gungan in the room. Jar Jar Binks. <laughs> he learned from this mistake because like the next two movies, he never tried something like this again. He demoted Jar Jar heavily. He but this was like his next Ewok. He's like, we're going to have this cartoony character and the kids are going to love him. They're going to want to buy toys of him and everything. And it backfired spectacularly. Banta Puru. I thought he was funny when I was a kid, but I never wanted his merchandise. I didn't want a Jar Jar toy. 
I didn't really care about him. I laughed at a couple things. And then yeah. as I got older, I'm like, he's getting less and less funny. Less and less funny. It was yeah. too much Jar Jar. Too much. Too much Jar Jar. They went all in on Jar Jar. Yeah. And it was um, blasphemy that I even said that. <laughs> <laughs> as Jar Jar's number one Jar Jar's fan. Jar a stud. Uh, he's, oh. Yeah. Heart <sighs> Heart. I would love a toy of Jar Jar, yeah. right? As someone who's younger. <laughs> as someone who's younger and doesn't, you weren't, you didn't have Star Wars. Yeah. You didn't have a lot of Star Wars experience before the prequels. I assume you saw them in close proximity. I remember watching two as it came out. Okay. And then I remember wait, like there was a period of time where three wasn't out yet. Yeah. And so I would like made my own little comics about what would have happened to create Darth Vader, which was okay. kind of a weird time to be alive. But, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, no, I mean, I liked the Phantom Menace a lot. I had the action figures and, and yep. had a good time with it. How do you feel about it now? I'll watch the really cool scenes on YouTube or I'll skip through the movie. Yeah. You know, what's funny. So I've tried, I've like introduced a few people to star Wars, like the original trilogy. I show them the untouched original trilogy and they always say like, I want to tre check out the prequels. I'm like, okay, we'll see how far you get. And like, it's happened twice where people have never watched star Wars. They, they genuinely enjoy the first three. And then like, like about, the time the pod race stuff starts happening, they always bail out. See, like, it's, why? it's not even the pod racing part. It's the scenes of all of them talking. Yeah. Before the pod. That's where I'm like, oh my God, can you shut the and fuck again, up? And again, like, don't. They're so, oh my God. You don't have a main character to follow. Like you don't know who you're. And you can do an ensemble movie, but he was not good at it. He mm. was not good at it. And yeah. I've heard people say, well, the main character in Phantom Menace was Star Wars itself. It's like, that's. No, shut up. That's, That's bad. probably true, but it's probably not good. Yeah, I mean, it's not no. a good way to write a movie. That's the other thing. He has full creative, uh, creative control now in these. Yeah, there's no one to fight him now. I mean, yes. think about Qui Gon is like the main character. I mean, kind of. Yeah, but he's yeah, I would not say a very good. Pick... He's not a very good one. Yeah. He's very bad. Fair enough, fair yeah, I, I would say if I had to pick anybody, it would definitely be. Yeah, him. he's like in every scene of the movie. And we yeah. pointed out he's just like, ah, oh, yes, I, uh, I need, I can't just steal the part from Watto. But I can illegally tamper with a race. Ooh, That's I made the okay. Dice go where I want it to. <laughs> He's like, if this kid dies in this race, I don't take him back. <laughs> that when you find out that like the Jedi don't have that when they're ripped from their family, it makes it creepier. Yeah. Well, I think that's the whole point. You're kind of sp like, you're not supposed to like actively know that the Jedi are pieces of shit, but they, but they kind of are. That's the kind of the whole Well, point. the original trilogy wasn't made to seem like that, but the that's prequel true. added that element. Yeah. Like, I just thought like, oh, hey, I have the force. I'm going to join the Jedi and mm. be Jedi Knight. I didn't know it was like, well, you need, okay, you're three years old. Uh, say goodbye to your mom. You're never going to see him again. Get rid of attachment. We got to like manipulate you. Welcome and to the cult. We got to yeah. indoctrinate you. I'm like, I don't like thinking of the Jedi as a cult, I thought they were the good guys. Like now it's like return of the Jedi. And I'm like, oh, I feel bad yeah, about even it. Like, when I'm like looking at the Sith stuff and I'm like, Oh, they're, they're bad because they, you know, get angry and yeah. sad and blah, blah, blah. And they just care deeply. And it's just like, what's bad about that? Why really, are really, they if the you bad guys? Movies, it's like, <laughs> all right. So the Sith are bad because they use their force power to enslave everyone and control them. But the Jedi are good because they use their force power to enforce the elected officials and carry out their will. And I'm like, well, that's... And also literally what you just said about the Sith. <laughs> they do enslave people, technically. Yeah, and they, they rob kids. I'm like, you guys are both kind of assholes. I miss, I miss the original trilogy, but I thought they were just good guy, bad guy. Now you're just kind of... Making it messy. <sighs> Making it messy, yes. Um, but I guess the, the lightsaber fight, people like mm. the lightsaber fight in Phantom Menace. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's good. So everyone's all divided, and then the second movie comes out. Ugh. Begun this Clone War has. I remember not being excited for this one. And I saw it in theaters, and I remember being like, it's okay. I'm like, alright, that was I guess it was Star Wars. That's kind of not where I saw it going. The stormtrooper thing confused me. Mm. One, because they were all clones which I thought was stupid. And they were all Boba Fett, which I thought was stupid. <laughs> and Boba Fett's dad was Boba Fett. And then this is where Lucas made the ship, uh, the jump from 35 millimeter to digital. And right. it's not very good. It is like, it's shot on a digital camera, which isn't great. And then he went like full. I remember being in the theater scene, like the full on CGI sets and like being very aware that they were CGI and 
now Yoda is CGI? Because in Phantom Menace, the theatrical release and the VHS, he's a puppet. I wanted to bring that up. That's horrendous. That was scary. I'm glad they changed it for CGI. It was a bad CGI. puppet. It, it I will grant you that it was a bad puppet. Yeah. But it was still a puppet, and then they changed it to CGI afterwards. Uh, but I remember seeing CGI Yoda for the first. What was your reaction to that? What the fuck is that? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I did, like, I in the years following, I was like, there, I grew to like a lot of the movie. There are some really fun moments, and I like the chase. So this is an example. I like the chase through Coruscant. With Zamwasel? Yes, but the setup for the chase is fucking stupid. So someone hired Jango Fett to kill Amidala, and then he hired, what's the name? Zam. Zam, who then hired space slugs. <laughs> no, who hired a robot to put the space slugs in her room, like, what is this multi-tiered assassinate? And then Jango Fett is apparently monitoring this whole situation to kill Sam at the end. It's like, why don't you just shoot shoot her? If Anakin had been like two inches closer to Padme when he swiped the like kill the little slugs. Yeah, okay, that's that's another her. thing. So there was a lot, and again, I know you don't have to tell me, everyone's pointing this out. The original trilogy had a lot of restraint with the lightsabers because it was a hard effect to do. Or it was very time consuming effect. Now it got really scoping. easy, and he found an excuse to use it every single time. They're Jedi. They could have just pushed the bugs. Yeah, I was going to say, couldn't he just, like, force pull and throw yeah, it to the side? Force, force squeeze. Like, yeah. Force squeeze them? Force throw Force them? kick? Force, force kick? Them. Like Luke's force <laughs> yeah. kick? Yeah, that's good. There's, yes. Yeah, the remember. only thing I like about this movie is literally from the arena on. That's it. Okay, yeah, and then there's the whole mystery of the clones. Who's making the clones? And apparently it was supposed to be Sidious called in the clones. But then I read that Lucas mistyped it to Sifo Deus. And then he's like, I like that name. So now we're going to have this entire backstory of a character that we have never met and will never see. Like this feel this doesn't feel like it's a sequel to Phantom Menace. Especially since it's like years later. Yeah. It feels like this is a sequel to a different movie. Annie, you're all grown up. Oh god, yeah. no, I'm getting to that. Uh, so then they added <laughs> the whole much bigger as well. <laughs> they had him the whole Sifo Deus thing, and then Dooku is a, a Count Dooku, Lord and Tyrannus, a, and they call him Count because he played Count Dracula a bunch of times. He's talking about how Sifo Deus made a clone army, and that Sidious is a person, and. To this day, I'm still confused about the yeah. specifics about a lot of this. From what I understand, it's like someone ordered a drink at Starbucks for you, yeah, but you didn't order the drink, and so you take it anyway. Okay. That's how it is. <laughs> <laughs> That's literally how it goes. That's pretty good. Yeah. And then the other thing that they added in this film was more Senate scenes, because this is all about Palpatine starting a conflict <laughs> to become Supreme Chan. Well, he's Supreme Chancellor, but he wants to be Emperor. That's like his goal. Wasn't like Padme like going to Coruscant to like vote to make him? Yeah, she's like, now a senator now because you elect queens on Naboo, and she's a senator. And then now we have the love story. I'm a senator, but I'm a senator. Yeah, what was that? Are are senators not allowed to? Because Organa's got a. Well, I assume yeah. all these other senators have like wives and. Also, why would you put the emotionally unadjusted kid? Yeah, that's like been like repressed his entire life. Yeah with the senator and go protect her and on this beautiful planet where it might be really romantic and you yeah. might talk about communism in the future. Like, like that's really, really weird. Yeah, that was a little bizarre. <laughs> <laughs> He's a foreign dictatorship. Yeah, he was a really great meme. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that is that is funny. It's like, oh, wow. He talks about her all the time and he had a crush on her. <laughs> Let's send them together. And by the way, she's like smoking hot now because now she's of age. And we're allowed to dress her way sexier. Uh, so yeah, let's put him with her. It's like, what the fuck did you idiots think was going to happen? And then they're only... To She's not dating anyone. Now the Jedi aren't allowed to have, like, being love with people or have relationships. It's like, what the fuck? Why are you guys making them so weird? And then we find out that, like, every Jedi had, like, a secret thing on the DL. They were like... Yeah, they started out of that. Yoda yeah. and Yaddle, I see you making baby Yoda. <laughs> yeah. Come on. We know where that came from. Don't try and hide. Oh, God, Yaddle. I forgot about Yaddle. She disappears in between movies. Um, yeah, the, the love scene is just so... 
fucking annoying. The music's so good, though. The music's it good. Is, it's John it's Williams. so good. But, but then I'm like remembering what scene I'm watching, and I'm like, oh. There's literally the scene Truly where she's like, deeply. Anakin, we can't date. And she's we wearing, love you. She's wearing like a fucking corset, like like, like a push-up corset. And it's like, didn't her one dress? It was like open and stuff. Yeah, like, girl. Yeah. And it's like, <laughs> girl. He's like, like, I'm tortured by the kiss you should have never given me. And it's like, it's like, okay, Pabby, he's like touching her Pabby, arm. I don't yeah. want to. <laughs> I don't want to say, like, don't dress like that because that's very problematic. But, like, if you know this guy is into you, maybe, maybe don't hang out with him alone while wearing a push up corset. Like, you're, like, maybe don't, don't hang out with him alone. Yeah. You have servants. Just always be in the room with someone. Just don't hang out with him. He's just there as security. Like, if he's trying to make out with you, say, like, hey, can you, like, walk the perimeter or something? Like, you're not <laughs> Go doing guard the door. Go do a lap. Yeah. Go yeah. pod race or something. Instead, he's like, I had a dream about my mom. We got to go to Tatooine. She's like, well, that's kind of like the worst possible thing I should be doing right now. She's like, are you good, dude? Yeah, she's like, are you good? So then we get the Tatooine subplot, which is awful. And we meet the Lars family. So that's not Anakin's brother. That really pissed me off. I was like. Anakin's what? brother, the other chosen one. <laughs> I assumed that they were brothers when I was a kid. Maybe they have different last names. I don't know. Maybe Skywalker was a name he chose for himself. That's how you could interpret it when you're a kid. Oh my god, I didn't even think about that. Yeah. Wow. But yeah, so then he saves his mom from the Sand People oh, who were saves who were torturing her for whatever reason. But Disney is now telling you that they're really cool guys. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she was probably just super offensive. We I think we talked about that yeah. in our Bo Book of Boba Fett review. Yeah. They're gonna eventually they're gonna have to circle around to that and make her look like the bad guy. Um, but yeah, you're right. The arena scene is like one of the only fun parts. And then they get lightsabers and it's ruined. And then all the Jedi show up with all the clones. And Mace a, motherfucking Windu with his purple lightsaber standing out right in the middle there. Then why don't they all have unique colors? <laughs> because because you're because he's Sam Jackson. Yeah. That's, that's literally but like it No, was, that's literally it. That's but literally it's just why. like, okay, Darth Vader's a bad guy, he's made his lightsaber red, and then the other one was blue, and then oh, Luke made a green one. I guess you can make multiple colors. But I guess, again, since they're so focused on the original trilogy, they're like, nope, everyone's got to have red and green. You can have purple. Everyone's got to have red and green. It's like, now why? there's yellow. There's, there's white. Yeah. yeah. Apparently orange is like super weak. Oh, now there's. Oh, my God. Yeah, because blue is strong with combat. Green is strong with the force. <laughs> red is just, you know, you're evil, I guess. That's another thing. Like the force is feels less special in these films. Yeah. It starts to feel like a video game. To be fair, like they were turned into an army, so they're like trying to figure out how to weaponize everything that they were yeah. being super spiritual I about. Guess. So, but yeah, the the arena scene was a lot of fun until that happens. Um, I like all the creatures; like they're kind of fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the creatures yeah. are fun. And then I like the the cat thingy that scratches uh, Padme. I really like that. Design. Yeah, yeah. And Padme is like really Why'd awesome. Why you give me that face? Like that's a good scene. I like that too. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so what did you think of Yoda fighting? Uh, dude, as a kid, I loved it. I, think yeah. I, I, I thought that was great. I, I liked, lost my shit. I liked it too. I thought it was hilarious, and I really liked it. And then as I get older and watch the other one, I'm like. Oh yeah, he shouldn't have done that. That was kind of stupid. <laughs> also, the scene where like that piece of whatever pole. Yeah, thing, the whatever pillars, the hell it is. Yeah. And he's like trying to be like, oh, I can't hold it. It's like, fuck them. Just go after it. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's it's kind of silly. and But it's funny, though. Like, apparently in the original edit, they were going to just have Yoda come in and start throwing hands, like pull his lightsaber out immediately and go, like, let's go. Oh, but then they God. were like, we need to tone Yoda back. So it could have been worse. They like added scenes where he's like, oh, they try to use the force a little bit. I, I don't like that Dooku has the lightning because now it's just. Like, yeah. you've achieved lightning ability. But now you're a bad guy now, and we know you're a bad guy. Yeah. Right? But then it's just like, you think about it, it's like, so why are the Separatists trying to separate? Because the Republic sucks. But the Republic does kind of suck. That's the kinda. thing. <laughs> so that's why I'm just like... I, and they explore that in the Clone Wars a lot. Like they do. Dooku yeah. even makes like a valid appeal to Obi Wan, being like, "Yo, these guys gotta suck, dude. That's why I yeah. split. You're not so. really on the right side. The Clone Wars did a good job of making this bullshit kind of make sense, but it would have been nice if this bullshit made sense. Fair. Like, imagine how much better the Clone Wars show would be yeah. if the two things bookending it wasn't terrible. Uh, R2D2 flies. Love it. And he pees oil. Jar Jar is demoted. But he he's demoted as a character, but then he's given more importance of the Senate, and he's kind of responsible for Palpatine uh, getting emergency powers. And the Senate is moved by Jar Jar's speech. 
and the 50s diner. Anyway, let's move on to return, uh, Revenge of the Sith. <laughs> Fucking Jar Jar Burnett scene where he like says his little speech and everybody's like clapping and he's just like, yeah, I did it. Yeah. <laughs> Dello Felicates. <laughs> Dello Felicates. <laughs> And this is the one everyone says is the good one. Yes. Yeah. So good. 100%. Love this one. And that's what I thought for years. And I loved this one. I thought it was awesome. So out of like, the three, cool. what are you picking? I mean, this is definitely the best of it. But, okay, that's, yeah. But at the end of the day, it's still not good. Okay, I'm asking you just, to, I'm not asking for, I, I want, <laughs> yeah. which one? <laughs> it's the best of those three, okay. but it's still not a good okay. movie. You didn't have to add the last part. <laughs> <laughs> uh, But yeah, like, but. So what is it? What is it about this that everyone thinks is the best? Like, why is this such an improvement over the other two? Get I would it. say it's like the typical, like what you would want from the original trilogy. Uh, very soap opera, like mm. bullshit with yeah. a lot of space. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's. Yeah, I guess I just like that. Like, just more action was happening, kind of. A two. The music is good. A lot of everything so that they were setting up with the other two movies finally comes to a conclusion. So it's like satisfying in a lot of ways. Yeah, like, I guess the the ending. You've only got two different endings going on, like Yoda versus the Emperor, yeah. and then Anakin versus Obi Wan. Yeah. I would say it's the Sith versus the Jedi. Yeah, both the fights. Honestly, I think it's just Ian McDermott's performance. It's oh, he saves it because so every actor time. sucks in these movies. And I even like, like Hayden though. But at yeah, this point, I liked Hayden yeah, at this one. But like. And it's not their fault. Like I've said it so many times, like they're great actors. They're just in a really bad movie and they're not really given a lot. That's why like, I'm hoping with the Obi-Wan show, it's like, let's see if Ewan McGregor can actually act in this part. Oof, I think Obi-Wan is great in these movies, man. For the actors, this is the beginning of like, hey, everything's a green screen now. Yeah. So like, it's kind of, and by the way, you don't even know what you're looking at. Right. Here's a guy, he's wearing green. He's got some lights on his head. That's your bad guy. It's like, how do you react? Like. Now we've had like 20 years and actors have kind of adjusted to it. And there's ways around it. You can see the pre-visualization and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But like back then, it's just, you just had to guess what was going on. And Sit on this green brick and then we'll turn it into like an iguana thing. Yeah. yeah. And like, how do you, like, I wouldn't know how to act with that. Like, I would need to see everything first. There, there was like some behind the scenes of like Natalie Portman rolling around in the droid factory filming yeah. stuff. And she's like, is this a joke? She's like, are you punking me right now? Like, this is hilarious. Like, she's yeah. like, they're joking, but like, yeah. she's probably like, why am I Because it like around? wasn't a thing. Like, green screen and stuff existed, but like yeah. not to that level. And it was like yeah. blue screen. They used a lot yeah, for Attack of the screen, Clones. Just, yeah, yeah. And then green for Revenge of the Sith. I'm yeah. Behind the scenes. I know, because the, there's <laughs> that famous scene of uh, Anthony... Uh, was it Anthony, Anthony Dan Daniels? As yeah, as Daniels C3PO. falling into yeah. the green screen set uh, yeah. <laughs> during the the killing the yeah. younglings part too. Yeah. yeah, and I get it. This one's like dark, and it finally shows the transformation of Darth Vader. <laughs> you just reminded me of the one because. Oh, McGregor's like trying to like not laugh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. during like, the one scene when he's talking younglings. to Padme, and he's like, he killed younglings, and then he's like, trying and that's to the thing. The story is so fucking <laughs> flawed. Like. Obi Wan watches the security footage of the Emperor admitting he's a bad guy. I can't watch anymore. Can you make a copy of that and pass it around, you asshole? Why was there even a camera in there? What did the bad guy not want the camera in there? Wait a minute, you're right. If they could have just distributed, I don't know, like a day earlier when he was like, "I'm going to be more evil tomorrow," and then they yeah. they could have just got him right there. It's stupid. The Jedi suck. But why didn't Dooku just go like, "He's the bad guy." Instead, he just sits there quietly and waits for his head to get chopped yeah. off. I think he was like in shock that he was even being betrayed. Yeah. He was like, oh, what? I'm sorry. You should expect to be betrayed. Like, it's like, oh, the guy who's playing both sides is going to betray me. Who could have saw this coming? Oh, no. Or like count dumbass. Yeah. What's that meme? Uh, if it isn't the consequences of my own actions. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it's got some decent like action scenes, but they're all like CGI. It's like that opening shot that's all in one take. I'm like, yeah, but. I mean, it was done in the computer. That's pretty easy to do one take. It's impressive. Like, the effects are impressive. But everyone's like, yeah, it was done in one shot. It's like, well, yeah, because it's... They're not using a real camera. They're not dealing with real sets. It's a little easier. Another uh, prop for the Clone Wars is the fact that Dave Filoni kept Anakin and Grievous apart the that entire show. That was the show. funniest thing. I didn't realize that. Yeah. So you couldn't have the two main characters meet because of one line of dialogue. That's the respect that people expect, but... Don't deserve, probably. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Dave Filoni, you, I don't think you need it to... 
He <laughs> probably could have had wiggle room around that. <laughs> and then, like, he hunches more, so maybe he's shorter than he yeah. expected. I don't know. And that's the thing. <laughs> uh, by 2005, we still didn't figure out CGI cloth. Like, Grievous's, yeah. Grievous's cape looks Grievous so Grievous himself looks really good. Yeah, though. I really like it. Grievous through. himself looks good. And then he puts the cape on it. So CGI cloth was so bad. Good but that's stuff. the other thing. This, so this is the end of Obi-Wan and Anakin's friendship. But it's like, yeah, but I didn't see their friendship. Yeah, they didn't. I saw really friend like even the first one is like I, I don't want to train this kid. They like, seem like they're bickering like assholes. They don't look like they're friends. They uh, they, they attempt to fix that because like you know when they face Dooku and, and uh, Attack of the Clones, they like rush in and then Anakin like goes without him. Yeah. And then in the beginning of Revenge of the Sith, they're like oh together this time and yeah. then they do it together. So and then they cut out the entire subplot of the rebellion being formed with Mon Mothma and uh, oh and, and Admiral Ackbar and little kid Han Solo being a Kashyyyk. They didn't even film that. They didn't film it, but they there was concept art that. for the it. The other ones yeah. they did film. So why is there the rule of two? Like, for the Sith? Because the, uh, the whole thing remember. is like, he'll bring balance to the Force. And then it's like, oh, that was literal because now there's only two Jedi oh. and two Sith. But then you find out that there's like a, a hundred of them George, still. George Lucas described, I think, one time that it was like, there always has to be the master and then the one that like betrays the other one. So like it's yeah. a constant cycle of like betraying one another. So like oh, that's yeah. like a supposed to be a thing, I guess. Because like, pla like Palpatine overthrew Plagueis yeah. and yeah. then, you know, yeah. it keeps going like that, yeah, I there's guess. There's always a master and an apprentice. An apprentice. Yeah. And, like, I, how, and how did Yoda know that anyway? Yeah. Well, I've always thought like, yeah, hmm, Sith's got something to tell us, Yoda. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was like Sith's come in pairs of two. I didn't, mean, I didn't know that it meant there's literally only two Sith in well, the entire galaxy. I'm like, oh, two that work together because like, yeah. Darth Maul and his brother were like a pair for a while. Right, Savage. right, right. Yeah, and then he kills a bunch of little kids. The Youngling Slayer Five Thousand is what they call the. <laughs> that's what they call. Yeah. They call the lightsaber. Wait, wait, why? Why, why do they go into exile? Yoda's like, I failed. I must go into exile. And then, like, Bail Organa should be like, I don't know, buddy. I think we need you. Yeah, like, I thought he uh, really was going to, like, from um, uh, Jedi or whatever, I thought that he was just going to get his ass kicked. Yeah. And then he just, like, was hurt and just literally had to, like, go into hiding because he couldn't do anything. Instead, it was just like, like I oh, I fell, I fell down. I can't yeah, get back up. Right. Like, I was Bye. always under the impression that, like, yes, they were in hiding because they were being hunted. But, like, I thought, like, because Obi-Wan is ready to help the Rebellion at a moment's notice. So I thought they were like actively still trying to help. They just couldn't be too public or else they'd be taken out because they were like two of the most popular Jedi. Well, because Obi-Wan had to go wait for Luke to grow up so yeah. he could eventually help him do the thing he needs to do. And then Yoda had to go to Dagobah and train with Qui-Gon to how to how to become a force ghost. Don't, I'm, oh, God damn it. I forgot about that. So they couldn't film the cameo from Liam Neeson because he broke his leg. So just... Just cut the scene out and rewrite it. Instead, they instead it's so bizarre. He literally just goes, "By the way, Qui Gon <laughs> called me. He's a ghost. I'm gonna teach you how to be oh a God. ghost." And Obi Wan's like, "That's cool." It's like, "That's a big fucking revelation, Yoda. When did this happen? Could we have seen that?" And it's kind of crazy that they like end up dive like go, diving into that a little bit. Like the only reason that Qui Gon can't show up, and we'll see about this in the Obi Wan show. But the only reason he can't show up is because he didn't finish the training. Yeah. And so like the wills of the Forest teach him how to do it, and then you can become a force ghost. Because yes. like before he was just a voice. By the I way, guess. there's a lot of sloppy editing in this one. A lot of it's just A cam, B cam, shot like a soap opera, which is a common criticism. But then there's weird things. So there's like, there's a there's a shot of Anakin next to Palpatine. And instead of just cutting, so like George, like the one reaction Anakin had in the beginning of one take and another he had like at the end of one Slice them together, take. yo, I remember that. So instead of just cutting to Palpatine and cutting back, he digitally spliced together, but you if you look at Anakin's hair, you see it morph, mm -hmm. and it's like, just stop, you're getting carried away. Just use a goddamn camera cut, you asshole. Like, or just pick one. Sometimes you gotta pick one tank. If you wanna splice together, cut to something, but that was like a really fucking bad edit. Uh, and there's, I think there's some scenes where like, you could tell Sam Jackson's talking and there's just nothing coming out of his mouth. It's yeah. bizarre. And they also I, didn't really choreograph that fight either. No. It was day of. But, I, yeah. but it's good anyway. I'll watch it again and Remember again. They're dancing. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes. Wom, wom, wom. And he's like falling backwards yeah. off the. So the I literally think people like this because at the end it, it's supposed to tie it up in a neat bow, but I still have questions. It's like, still a little frustrating how it's it's not perfect, but it does a good enough job. And also, did yeah. you know that Steven Spielberg directed parts of the fight at the very end of Revenge of the Sith? Really? Yes. Mm. He was he was trying to ex uh, experiment with some um, ILM stuff. And oh, so okay. George like let him like 
do some of the yeah. stuff, I guess. Because at the end, it's just like, it's like, I feel like Obi and Owen should be older. I don't feel like this is going to match it's up. It's the freaking sons. Yeah. <laughs> I don't believe that one. Uh, I buy it. I buy it. Yeah, it's like Luke and Leia. You got force lightning but in the, the face. And this calls back to freaking uh, Leia remembering her real mom. Yeah, it's like she like, died in childbirth. No, well, I wouldn't call it childbirth. I call it, could you imagine that giant fucking scoop and scooping the baby? Oh, I saw that and I was horrified. I was like, I'm never having children. <laughs> oh my God, what if they got Kira Knightley to hang out and pretend like it was her mom the whole time? Yeah. James Earl Jones comes back. No. no. Which was memed into oblivion. Is she safe? Is she all right? <laughs> Had me. <laughs> um, and he, he walks like uh, Frankenstein. It sounds like he's pooping. He's like. Oh, remember in the trailer? He was like this. Yeah, they and moved the it. other cut. It's like different. Uh, but I feel like he's wearing he's wearing his Empire Darth Vader suit, not his episode four. Whichever Darth one looks cooler. Um, apparently, yeah. they intentionally made his helmet a little bit too big yeah. so that it looked like he was had to grow into it the wookies look fucking awful in this chewbacca looks horrifying in this why is chewbacca hanging out with yoda i love it they're like Damn it. it's yoda. so annoying it's so annoying. everything's connected it doesn't have to be connected everything so then star wars goes away for a while mm. and then the dark times and then the disney times. buys it and they're like we're making new movies without george lucas and everyone was like yes they're gonna fix it. They're gonna fix it. I really like this one. I, it's a new hope. Makes if you don't, sense. That's the thing. Yeah. That's the thing. So everyone's like, it's just new hope. And I'm like, if I spent four billion dollars on a franchise and the entire fan base is still shitting on the previous three, I'm gonna play this one safe. I'm gonna play this one but safe. But then they and don't play oh, it safe <laughs> yeah and that's yeah. what dooms the rest of the, the sequel because it starts out not taking both uh trilogies into account i feel yep. like yes it is purposely ignoring the prequels there's little like references to them here and the there. first line of the movie is this will begin to make things right and like as a direct da a jab at like the prequels yeah. and stuff uh so i thought <laughs> the movie Meanwhile. when i first saw it we were excited we were all hyped i liked it uh i liked it when i saw it i enjoy it i, I still saw it when it first came out. i went to the movie tavern I went back and watched it again, like some scenes of it recently, and like yeah. it aged really. I mean, it's aged pretty yeah. well. I like yeah, it. The a problem lot. is J.J. Uh, Abrams used Star Trek as a testing ground, and I like his first Star Trek movie. The second one's really bad. That's a dig on Star Trek. Yeah, and the second one, his second Star Trek movie is terrible. But mm -hmm. it's like he was just using that as a like, hey, here's my test footage for what I could do with Star Wars. It's like, yeah, but. I wish it didn't come at the cost of making a terrible Star Trek movie. It plays it safe. You're right. It plays it safe, but they're also doing the toy thing because now we have BB-8. BB is cute. He's cute, but like it could have just been R2. There's a couple big toy things. Mm. So you could argue there's a lot they didn't turn into toys very well. See, I mean, yeah. Kylo Ren. I mean, I yeah. guess. Yeah. No, I, I like when they have some nostalgia stuff. Yeah. But like, don't just like, oh, now let's take away everything for the new characters and we're all just going to focus on this one. Like, yeah. even with, like, Han in it. Like, mm -hmm. it's barely... Like, he's, like, there and you're like, oh, heck yeah, but, but you're yeah, still Harrison, focused on the other characters. Harrison Ford's pretty bad on this. Yeah. Uh, Har Han Solo is the character who was, like, least important to bring back. Yeah. Like, yeah. Because you kind of need Leia to show you, like, what the government's doing, but then yep. they conf they muddy it and confuse it. Yeah, and you need Luke to show you what the Jedi are doing, and they fuck that one up, too. Uh, but like Han Solo was just kind of like a smuggler who married a politician, like because right. Leia is still kind of fringe. I mean, it's not like they like moved up in the world or anything. No. Yeah, it's bizarre. Like so, so there is the New Republic, and I guess they have an army, but and they cut a lot of these scenes out, which are then recycled for Rise of Skywalker yeah. digitally. Uh, but like the the Republic is not taking the First Order seriously. First Why mistake. Are they, and like this is a thing where it's like. The stormtroopers technically shouldn't be bad guys because like the rebels won and the Senate came back, like that's their military. Like there's probably a lot of stormtroopers that are like, hey, I'm just following orders. You're in charge now, or right, I work for you now. Like obviously the moths and stuff, you gotta. Get rid I got of those the guys. details on what George Lucas's sequels are. We're about okay. to, we're supposed to be about whenever you're okay, ready okay. for that. Yeah, but but because they're Disney's playing it safe, they're like stormtroopers are the bad guys. Of course. It's like, yeah, but that doesn't really make sense. Wait, have they done anything bad yet? No, but like, yeah. they're not fine. clones anymore. Yeah, and yeah. then the the Kylo Ren has to look like Darth Vader and he also has to have an emperor character. It's like her. he has his own special lightsaber. But like, I, I like the character of Finn, the idea of a stormtrooper defecting. Yeah, I thought that was interesting. I 
I liked everything about Ray except for her mysterious origin. Because at this point, I was tired of the J.J. Abrams mystery box thing. Because it ruined yeah. Lost. It, so that's it, why I like uh, The Last Jedi, because they literally say that she's nobody. We'll yeah. get that's that. what I loved. We'll get yeah. to that. But they introduced it as this thing, but they didn't have. A, we now know that they did not have a plan for this. And it's like, I don't care who she is. I'm fine if she's just some. Like, yeah. When you first watch Star Wars, you don't know Luke is Darth Vader's son. He's just some guy that gets thrown into the world. It's like, okay, that's kind of a cool twist. So that was like, you're right. It was playing it very, very safe. Yeah. But the effects are great. Mm hmm. The visual effects are really, really good. They bring back puppets and practical effects and blend it with CGI, which I think is really, really good. It looks really good. Yeah. yeah. The whole movie looks great. Like I said, the movie's fine. It's like Han Solo's movie, kind of. They brought him back. Yeah, it was supposed to be um, Han, Luke, and then Leia. Yeah. Obviously, it did not go that the way. The only thing I, yeah, like I was, like, like you just yeah. said, the only thing I did not like about the movie was you didn't get any Luke in this. And like that's what you expected to see going into the next one was like yeah, Luke doing something because they wanted to do their mystery box and it's like this is not an audience you could do the mystery box no. with and also, especially after all this time and also the prequels we're, we're tired of figuring out who's related to who we don't care anymore like just just make the characters good like I said I really liked Finn in this yeah just because stormtrooper defecting. I like that. Let's explore that. He should have been the Jedi, like the Jedi yeah. character for sure. And they then, literally set that up. Yeah. yeah and then Poe was supposed to die. Mm. But they're like, no, we like him. Let's bring him back. But they brought him back like lazily. Yeah. And he doesn't really do like he's supposed to be the Han Solo of the series, but he never <sighs> achieves that status. I wish Finn and Poe were boyfriends. Yeah, they keep hinting at that. I, I, I mean, that wish. undermines just they do it in, um, this, in the Legos. Yeah, the Lego they have them together. I like yeah. the uh, memes where it's like, these bitches gay. <laughs> Good for them. Good I didn't really them. consider them to be gay. First off, they just met. So, and they were like, the I thought lives. there was a spark there. But I the thought jacket. there was something there. I, here's the thing. Yeah. I wouldn't yeah. have minded if they were. I just never got that vibe. I just thought they were good friends. Like, well, maybe you should stop looking at it with your hetero lens. <laughs> I saw like I didn't I didn't get it at first, yeah. And then I saw gifts on Twitter. I was like, okay, yeah, I can see it. Yeah, 100%. yeah. But like the way they're like buddying up and stuff, and I'm just like, am I gay with my friends? Because I feel like I like hang out with them and stuff. But like I'm not. Uh, are you? I don't think I am. Mm -hmm. It would solve a lot of my problems if I yeah, were. So <laughs> but I'm try, not. Smoo try smooching your bros. See what happens. Poe is like set up like, but not very well because yeah. they it's so confusing. Uh, Chewbacca looks good. It's Peter Mayhew in the chair, and it's the other actor walking around. Uh, yeah, there's interesting stuff they planted here, but like the I, I'm never all in on the First Order because it's just lazy. It's just like, well, you're just the Empire. This is again. more Star Troopers, yeah. Yeah, and it's like, what is your overall goal? And then the, the and then again, mystery box. How did Snoke make this army, and then also corrupt the Jedi school? That'll be a story for another day. And you got Maz Kanata. Found the lightsaber, apparently. She found the lightsaber, and she can use the Force. There was like a deleted scene yeah. or something where she uses the Force, That's but like she's a not thing. a Jedi. Okay. That's why I was hoping they were going to go into like gray Jedi stuff. Yeah, seriously. Or the Bendu. The last Jedi, too. The Bendu. They're in the middle. Yeah. The from uh, Rebels. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I thought at the time it was better than the prequels. It's shot better than the prequels. The effects are better. The characters have some kind of personality. Even if they are just doing a new hope again, the, the characters have a personality. The to dialogue them. flows. Yes. I really liked uh, Ray's theme. Yeah. Ray's theme is really good. It's really cute. Yeah, John Williams back at it doing it. Doing yeah. Thing, you know. He, he never disappoints. Yeah. Ever. Yes. Like, find me something where it's bad. No, uh, no R2. It's. They save R2 to the very end, and he's the best character. No, no, no. In Star Music. Wars. John Williams. Oh, and it's John Williams. Never mind. In my opinion, it's only bad when they don't use him, like in the fight at the end in Rise of Skywalker, which we haven't gotten there yeah. yet. But uh, so yeah, the movie ends on this cliffhanger. Why did Luke go to search for the Jedi Temple mm. after his school failed? It's like, well, he went to the temple. Maybe he tried to learn like what he did wrong, what he could have done better. Uh, yeah. So uh, what'd you call it? Kylo Ren is being sent back to the the Snoke to see what's going on there. There's an uneasy alliance between Snoke and Redhead Guy. Yeah. What was his name? Dude from Harry Potter. Is he in Harry Potter? Uh, no, he's not in Harry Potter. Oh, is he in Harry Potter? He's in Dread. Dread. I, I know he's in Dread. Um, oh, my God. I can hear his voice. Whatever his name yeah. is. Hux. So the, yes. Hux. 
So there's still like an uneasy alliance there. I'm like, oh, cool. We'll see this all explored in the next film. You know what did it better? But The Arl Knots episode. Yes, the Arl Knots episode was. That I do voices in. Yeah. <laughs>Jeez. What did you think of Rogue One? Um, it's it's good. I, I think that like it's really slow, and the character. My criticism right off the bat was that I didn't care about the characters that much. Yes, the characters are awful. Everyone who likes this movie, they just like the action scenes. Yeah, but it's very bland and boring. And they I fired. Say it's boring. Well, Gareth Edwards is bad with characters. He was bad in Godzilla. He's bad in his movie Monsters. He's good with effects but he's never been able to direct anything solid with characters. It's arguably one of the best looking Star Wars movies. Though. Yes, it looks like, really, really good. Sure. And I think people get distracted by the action and everything, but it's just not that I got good. Saw Gerrera, Cassian yeah. Andor is getting his own show. They're already shooting season two, apparently, and it's not even out yet. I, I don't even want to see episode one of that show. I like Diego Luna, but yeah. I didn't care about that character. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, it's just the Grand Moff Tarkin being CGI was distracting. But like we didn't need the fucking like the episode the Star Wars like hey some rebels they got the plans, and I hate that the hole for the ship was planted by the girl's dad, Mads Mikkelsen. I thought that was just like a cool thing. He used the Force and it all worked out, and the Empire was overly ambitious and they didn't explore this detail. But but no, he planted it there. You have this makes it less special. You have this big schism in the fan base where it's like, we need to over explain things. No. And then people that don't want to explain anything. And so like, I think yeah. Rogue One was like right in the middle of that. It made it kind of fun. Yeah. I, guess. I don't and know. And then they fired the director and which they kept quiet. That's why there's that Darth Vader scene at the end. That's like the editor came up with that. Yeah. But like, it's just like, that doesn't really make sense. Like tone wise, like, all right, we're supposed to be mourning the death of our characters. But it's like, oh, forget about that. Darth Vader's going to do ninja moves. But that's so cool. It made the whole it movie It is, but when it. you watch those movies back to back, it's like, oh, I guess he got real tired by the time A New Hope happened. I was hoping he would get hurt. That was the theory that he would get hurt, and that's why he's slow and then in the next one. nothing. But yeah, uh, Rogue One, whatever. I still thought it was pretty ballsy that they killed everybody. Uh, yeah, no, I didn't think they were going to do it. Yeah, I didn't think they were going to do it I either. Because it, it. Disney, yeah. you know. It's good. I need to rewatch it again. I just got on Blu-ray. I need to watch it again. It gets worse every time you watch it. Mm. I watch like three times. I still like it. Yeah, it's great. Like now it's every great. time I watch it, I'm just like because it feels very clunky toward the end. I just like because K2S. of all the reshoots and stuff. Mm -hmm. They were gonna have Darth Vader on the ground, yeah, uh, doing stuff with lightsabers and shit. That would be cool. Yeah, but they um, kept showing stormtroopers on a tropical island. Yeah, and it turns out that was just footage to promote Disney resorts. Anyway. <laughs> I, again, super low expectations. Don't care. If they fucked it up, I wasn't going to be upset. And there was a lot of stuff I liked in Last Jedi. I liked what they were trying to do with Luke, how he lost his way because he felt like a failure and he got caught up in his own legend. And it wouldn't be the first time that he was also inching towards the dark side. Yeah. And I liked all that. He's trying to teach Rey. And he's like, hey, you know, maybe like the whole Jedi thing, maybe having this organized hierarchy around this like thing that's bigger than all of us wasn't the best idea. And I liked all of that, but then he's, he's kind of just a fucking asshole. Yeah. And the whole subplot is kind of really boring too. Unfortunately, like they go to the rich planet. Oh, that's the thing. Oh, I don't like that part. Again, I, I love the movie when it's just Ray Kylo. The, the, stuff. the Finn and Poe stuff. It's clear. Ryan Johnson did not care about them. And there are people who pretend to like it. They're like Rose Tico. I got into a fight with that uh, actor, Camille Nagiani on Twitter a few years back. Which you can't find because I ought to delete my tweets. But when everyone was bullying the actress who played Rose Tico, yeah. which I didn't know she was being bullied. Yeah. Everyone so gets bullied. Everybody bullies the Star yeah. Wars people. But I just I get bullied for saying one nice thing about Last Jedi. Good. Yeah. I signed I signed into Twitter and I see Camille Nanjiani talking about how great the character Rose Tico was. And I'm like, she doesn't really do anything. Yeah, she doesn't do shit. So I, I literally wrote, I was just like, hey, uh, he was like, she was great and I loved it. I'm like, what the fuck movie did you watch? I love the actress. Yeah. So he retweeted me. He's like, I watched Last Jedi. Which movie did you watch? And I could tell that he thought I was going to be one of these other assholes. So I totally blocked. And by the way, I had people, I had those assholes being like, yeah, fucking tell them that movie sucked, blah, 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 blah. So my, rea my response was, I'm like, oh, well, I saw a movie where the uh, white director only cared about the plot line with the white actors and totally underwrote the characters of color. And Kamel did not respond to that because I'm fucking right. And Ouch. then all the people were on my side, they're like, wait a minute, what? 
what the fuck did he say? You fucking woke assholes. So like I, I was, it was this beautiful moment where I just pissed everyone off. Everyone just exploded. Yeah. yeah. Like, I don't know what but really, when you think about it, it's like he did not give a shit about Finn or Poe. He throw, they threw Rose in. Honestly, I really wish it was switched up. I wish the Poe and Rose story was mm. just them two. Like yeah. Instead of Finn and uh, Rose, yeah. and then I wish Finn was actually with Ray the whole time. Yeah, yeah, that would have been so much. Like they could have both been Jedi. That would have yeah. been really cool. And then like if they anything. could have shown. Oh, or, but that, that's well, the thing. Hold that's, on, hold yeah. on. Finn, he's going towards the light. He's not thinking anything in the dark, whatever. Oh, but Ray, yeah. ooh, she's going towards the dark there. Yeah. But it would have been great. But you're right. Cool. You're right. So everyone really liked the little bit we saw of Finn and Poe, and then the next movie, it's like split them up. Yep. Yep. And yep. I know Empire splits up the characters. But these characters weren't all together in the first one. Right. Why are you splitting them up? Like, we want to see them actually on an adventure. You don't have to do everything Empire did, you assholes. Right. Uh, so, yeah, he really underwrote them. He gave them a garbage storyline. I still crack up that Rose has to oh. explain to Finn that child slave labor is wrong. It's Even like, though he was taken in as a kid, He's probably. a child slave. He already knows this lesson. Yeah. And she's like, oh, you, you're, you think all this rich stuff is awesome? It's like... Yeah, if I was like extremely poor in slavery, I'd probably think it would be awesome to have a lot of money. Like, I don't know what to tell you. I like Benedito del, del Toro's character, though. Mm, I do. Oh, no, he was terrible. Is, that's the only part I've, like, I find mildly entertaining about that whole subplot is him being like, just basically like jerking yeah. him around being like, hey. And that's another yes, thing. Yes, I'm totally helping you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <right>. Yes. <laughs> that's another thing. They're like, so. Phasma. Oh God! That, Phasma, that I totally actually, forgot that that was a character. I said I'm so one word because they I literally said. were hyping that up at like as this huge thing. Like, uh, uh, freaking John Boyega. Yeah. Um, he was saying it like, yeah, anybody who's had like a bad boss will really enjoy this scene or whatever. And I'm like, oh, cool. Like, I've had shitty bosses or whatever. So I'm thinking like this is gonna be a great fight scene, and then like nothing happens. Well, yeah. they cut out where he rats her out for lowering the shield, and she kills her subordinates. They cut all that out. Uh, uh, Their the fight is very like, yeah, take it or leave it. But remember, I, I like. Remember they made an evil BB-8, so BB-8 had someone yeah, to fight. That's funny. That was funny. That's funny. <laughs> More. So yeah, their whole storyline sucks. They should have just skipped to them being on the ship and Finn using his stormtrooper knowledge, but that's such a minor part. Also, really like mm, when they were like, "Oh yeah, well, I was basically like the janitor." I was like. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Ryan, please. Yeah. yeah. Ryan. Yeah. Well, now the previous movie said Ryan. he worked in sanitation, but he clearly had just been upgraded. Anyway. Uh, so, yeah, wh while this Luke stuff is going on, that's kind of interesting. Like, he, uh, his, his nephew was turning to the dark side. He had a moment of weakness, but his nephew didn't know that he wasn't going to do it. Which a lot of people claim is character assassination in the first place, but yeah. yeah. And, and I see, I just think it's. I think it's a good idea that was poorly executed. Fair enough. I, I'm yeah. not on board with like he purposely went out to ruin everything. I just think I still think it works too, whatever. Because like think of like he literally did all this work. Yeah. Like everything that happened in the first three movies or whatever. Like obviously if he, his whole life was threatened, wouldn't you be like, oh fuck, like I can nip this out? But like, oh shit, no, it's my nephew. I can't do that. Yeah. But I then, think it's fine. and he said he regretted it as soon as it happened. Mm -hmm. But yeah. But then like he's supposed to teach Ray like three lessons about like the force. That's one good thing I will give this movie. I like how trippy the Force is. Because the prequels have turned the Force into, like, you have this power, you can now shoot lightning ability. And it's like, stop it. The, the montage with, like, the plants growing and, like, yeah, I think it's cool. really cool. Yeah, the cool. Force was well magical. And then it was like, the bacteria in your blood unlocks the special rock moving ability. Um, I didn't like the slapstick, like, tickling part, but I was like, well, whatever. Yeah, his funny. comedy's very... The so comedy yeah. in the movie is very it's hit rough. or miss, mostly miss. Rough. Yeah. The, the your mom joke at the beginning? Yeah. Right. I mean, I don't mind that the characters are doing stuff like that, because the prequels, they were all wooden. Yeah. So I don't mind that he's trying to give them, like, personalities and stuff, but the jokes fell flat for me. Um, he's trying to teach her lessons, and then we never see her most important lesson. They cut the scene out so we can have more casino world. So he's on like a rock with her and you see yep. these boats coming to the village with the weird nuns. And he's just like, oh, yep, those are the raiders. They're going to come in and raid the town and kill a bunch of them and then leave. And Ray's like, we got to do something. He's like, nah, you know, circle of life. Just got to let it happen. And Ray's like, fuck you. And she runs in with the lightsaber and it turns out it's just a party. And like, he's like, yeah, the lesson I'm trying to teach you, like, we don't need like a Jedi and all these rules and stuff. We just need people who are willing to fight 
for the less fortunate and fight for good. That's kind of nice. Yeah, you don't even need it's the lights. It's a really good scene. They could have kept It's that. like, you don't even need the lights. You don't need the lightsaber, the force, as long as you're willing to fight. But they cut it out. That, that could have helped a lot of things. Yeah. But but we got BB-8 uh, being a slot machine and shooting coins mm. and riding space horses. I do like the horse design. Yeah, but it was stupid. And then they set them free, so they weren't slaves, too. Yeah, they probably all got recaptured, or yeah, they, they probably don't. can't survive in the wild, Broom so boy. they killed them. Uh, <laughs> Broom boy. Broom boy. Broom boy. I can't wait to talk about that. Uh, so, yeah, then the movie, it does a clever thing. One of the clever things I like, people hated this. Snoke? Yeah. I thought I it was great. It. Yeah. I no, thought I thought it was good. great, because everyone's like, oh, it's just going to be like Empire. And I'm like, oh, wow, that's a cool twist that he killed the Emperor, and now he's the bad guy. Yeah. He's like, you know what? I'm going to listen to me right now. I've been trying to be like Vader. I'm me now. And that's why he breaks the helmet. Kind of forcing JJ to yeah. be like. The only thing he can't do is kill villain. his mom. He kills Admiral Akbar. Well, someone else shoots, I guess. Yeah. That's another thing. Admiral Akbar. Then she Mary played. Poppins back in there. I laughed in the theater like out loud so the first I. time I saw it. It's a little goofily excellent. I'm fine with her knowing goofily. a little bit about the force and being able to do that. It's the fact that she went like this. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, like, it was that was silly. Bad. Oh God! They just and they, yeah, they sidelined Leia for most of the movie. I thought that was stupid. Um, she's like asleep the whole time. Yeah, yeah. So we have Lara Dern, who I was excited for because I like Lara Dern. I'm like, oh, this character is awful. Um, <laughs> uh, I like the lesson they were trying to teach Poe, but Poe is like right for most of the part. Yeah. Um, she won't communicate the plan at all. Like, yeah, not even yeah. stupid to a good de- to a helpful degree. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. So then we get uh, onto the ship. Uh, I like that he kills Snoke and he's now the bad guy. And I like that they were like, by the way, your origin, your parents were just drunks and they left you. Yeah. Because like the point is anyone can be a Jedi if you're aware of the force and you're along with the force. I also really like the fight scene with uh, Rey and uh, Kylo or whatever, even though some parts... They could have clearly killed Ray. There was an opening right there. Yeah, they it was got a, really he got nice a little ca- scene. That's the thing, Ryan Johnson. He's good with some certain character stuff, but then he's like bad with the action because like he got yeah. he got carried away with all the bad parts of the prequels, where it's like everyone's got to be flippy and doing all these crazy movements. It's like yeah, but these are kind of stupid. It's the Jedi at their peak, man. I wanted to see that stuff, Ugh. but it's not that good, and that's why China backed out on these films because oh, yeah. they're like our movies have way better choreography than these. <laughs> Um, yeah, so the yeah, the whole throne room fight is pretty stupid, uh, but I get it. But then I like the re- revelation that she's no one because I mm-hmm. said that. When I for- love that. I remember Force Awakens. I'm like, I kind of wish she's just nobody because mm-hmm. I'm getting tired of everyone being related. Yeah, and that was really really cool. You know, they fight, the lightsaber explodes, she gets away, and the movie probably should have ended there. And then we get the crate battle that goes on a little too long. Salt. I like, there were so many lines where I was like, that's going to be a, a Twitter gift to respond to people that yeah. don't like this movie. Everything you just said is wrong. And then Gareth line. Edwards is there and he's all like, yeah, I'm in a Star Wars movie. I can't wait to people see my Star Wars movie that I got, that I got fired from. And he's also <laughs> in that one too. He's the guy that pulls the switch that yeah. parts the, yeah. the shuttle. Uh, oh, wait, they deleted a scene that I'm pretty sure you would have loved. What was that? So after uh, Luke just yeets the lightsaber over his uh, shoulder, which I love that scene. I don't yeah, care. I, cracked I up. love how that opened up. I was like, oh, yeah. I was like, ah! <laughs> I was like, why? But okay. So Ray uh, walks over to get the lightsaber and the Porgs are there. Yeah. So the Porg was supposed to turn on the lightsaber and hit the other Porg through the eyeball. That's funny. That funny. I love like, that. That's that an, like there's, uh, I think there's like a gif or something. I don't know. There's that like concept it. art like somewhere or whatever. But like, uh, I remember seeing that. I'm like, where did this come from? And then the deleted scenes came out. I was yeah. just like, you pieces of that's shit. That's funny. Also, Porgs are great. They literally are just there. They aren't annoying. They're yeah, not- Porgs are terrible. Um, Best. Uh, <laughs> Porgs the, are terrible. The scene with Chewie eating the the pork that was and the only feeling scene bad I liked about it porgs. is funny. No, I like that scene. They're all like crying. They're I wish like, we saw the setup to that where he's just like, yeah, he's just like, <laughs> just gutting. Okay, I think he's a liar. Uh, he said porgs are the best thing to. Hack you hacked my account. I didn't hack anything. That seems like that a very is you. Real sure. And then he's like, I'm say. reporting you to Elon Musk. <laughs> <laughs> Elon Musk is on my side. You're reporting yourself. <laughs> hey, according to all the people who bitch about Last Jedi, Elon Musk is our guy. No, so uh, he's no. gonna help me out. I'll like Elon if I can get him to say I like porgs. There you go. Hold on. Let me see Do if it. I. I have to check something to see if I like Elon this week. Hold on. 
No, my crypto wallet still has not recovered from his shenanigans last year, so I don't like Elon Musk. Mm, um, fair enough. So anyway, uh, you like how that's how I base it off? I'm like, do I like him? Hold on. I no. like Elon because Tony doesn't like him. <laughs> also, he's kind of an asshole, and his hair plugs are bad. Kind of. Uh, I said that. No. <laughs> so anyway. So the movie then needs this big action-y ending and it goes on way too long. It did stretch out too much. And then Ray's just kind of there. She's like, I'm in the Millennium Falcon because I'm the pilot and the Jedi. So are the Porgs. Yeah, the Porgs stowed away. <laughs> Finn, I agree. I don't like the whole noble sacrifice, especially when I it's a person of that. color because that's very cliche and that would have been a problem. But just rewrite this entire scene because what they have now is stupid because Finn's about to do something that would be super helpful Yeah, to stop the Death Star battering ram thing and Rose stops him. By also technically sacrificing herself because she gets hurt. It's not about killing what we hate. It's about protecting what we love. And then gets completely sidelined at the next movie. Yep. Yeah. Uh, but then they get in and like they all could have been fucking murdered. Yeah. But luckily Luke shows up. Yeah. Uh, shows up. Yeah, I did like this. So I, projection. So I got worried when he's doing like the backflip and everything. I'm like, oh no, they're making him prequel Jedi. Oh no. That wasn't enough. Because you see Obi-Wan in the first movie and he's like an old guy and he's acting like an old guy should. And then you see Count Dooku doing flips and shit. It's like, ah. But then I like that it was all like a projection. And he was just I noticed right him. away, by yeah. the way. I did it. Because I saw my main, uh, like I was just paying attention to the ground because I really liked how. It, like it would turn red yeah. when you would like move the salt. And every time Luke was moving, I was like, he ain't doing nothing. Is he like just like hovering or something? Like what the hell's yeah. going on? And then that happened and I was just like, oh. And I like that he uh like humiliated Kylo in front of everyone. <laughs> and more because he didn't even notice that the lightsaber was literally exploded the old in the one, scene yeah. before. Yeah. yeah. Um but then we get a little bit of what Disney's doing now. Oh wow, the dice. He gave Leia the dice from the Millennium Falcon that you could never see. And it was kind of an inside joke, but he gave her the dice. I have the dice in my car now. Oh, do you know why he gave her the dice? Solo. Because Solo was coming out six months later. Whoa. And it's like, this is, oh no, you're starting to advertise in your movies. Stop it. Not Star Wars. It's hard to tell where advertising ends and then character adding to character. This stops. is an advertisement because that those dice meant nothing because arguably like nothing made like that didn't make you go want to watch the movie no so it didn't work no but it was and i think the they were thing. literally only in a new hope and then they put yeah. them back in on force awakens yeah, yeah. Uh, they anyway. definitely weren't a thing yeah anyway uh i guess they were from his ex-girlfriends maybe he put right. them away when leia got in the picture yeah um yeah so the movie is like the one of the most hated star wars movies i don't hate it for a reason a lot of youtube hates it like, I'm not sitting there like, feminism, blah, 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 blah. Uh, there were a lot of horrible decisions made. And they speak of... So Kathleen Kennedy fires Gareth Edwards. She fires Colin Trev Trevorrow. She fires... Lawrence uh, Kasdan. No, Lawrence Lord, Kasdan wrote this part. Sorry. He, yeah. he, she fires Lord and Miller, who were all... Who all proven themselves to start, like, reboot or start franchises. But then she gave full creative control to Ryan Johnson, who did, like, Looper, I guess? Like he was Breaking not experienced. Breaking Bad episodes, which he did do my favorite Breaking Bad episode. Yeah, but he was not experienced in successfully adding a new chapter to a major franchise. I'm actually curious how Knives Out 2 is going to go. Mm -hmm. But he, Knives Out, I thought was fine. Knives yeah. Out was great. I yeah, Knives, Knives Out was out good. A lot, yeah. And I'm not even a Ryan Johnson hater. I mean, he did ruin you. He destroyed a friendship of mine. He no, poisoned he you. And I don't like that he likes our tweets, but he won't come on the show. <laughs> So yeah, uh, I think it's because of you because you harass him. Yeah, because you're clearly baiting him, but then he ignores <laughs> yeah. you and goes right to me <laughs> but every like, time. It's been, every time you should it, have your own show. And it's been like five. Oh my years. god, just me and Ryan. Yeah. That, yeah. Oh my god. That's but funny. it's been like five years now, and I'm tired of people fucking talking about this movie or fighting about it. Like guys, it's was it it? Uh, no, uh, no one hates Star Wars more than Star Wars yeah, fans. Yeah, yeah. So. And I get it. It's, just, it's not a very good movie. Even the parts I like don't make up for the rest of the movie. I think it's really weak. It's like I didn't like this. This is did an inter interesting thing because I didn't like the Last Jedi, and yeah. then this came out, and then I liked the Last Jedi. <laughs> like yeah. it was one of those things. It yeah, was, but no, I was just one of those like I liked how they got tr like creative with the Force with the whole like almost teleporting kind yeah, of. I thought it that was, was some, cool. Some cool editing. Yeah, uh, I liked the ideas. I just think the execution was weak. I think it needed more rewrites. I didn't think the action was particularly good. 
Uh, the comedy fell flat. What do you think for about me? the end with the force broom? I like the idea of that. The idea is that oh, Luke's legend will inspire all these people who haven't heard of the Jedi to like explore the force in themselves and want to be heroes and stand up for what's right. But Star Wars fans are idiots. So like, who could Broom Boy be? Mm. Is it Boba Fett's son? Like they, they started jumping to that shit. It's like, I think you guys, like, I mean, the it was pretty obvious to me. Uh, but that it's no one just like Ray was supposed to be. Yeah. Because his name is something dumb. He wasn't going to turn into a main yeah. character. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to find it real quick. Oh, he has a name? Yeah, it's hilarious, if I remember correctly. <laughs> uh, his name is Tamiri Blag. Okay, Blag. Tamiri Blag. So in between films, we get Solo, the most expensive Star Wars film ever made because they fired the directors and reshot like 90% of the film. Yeah. It's not good. No. I would have liked to have seen what the original was. Yeah. Right literally have it and not good yes like, uh, literally not good i don't hate the guy who plays han solo people had a problem with him i glad i'm glad they didn't do digital de-aging it's just not very well written this and, the same guy that did the deep faking for luke on mandalorian season two yeah. did deep faking on han solo for this movie and yeah. it's like a perfect performance well, th this is the guy who like didn't he do something like he like fixed something from something else with star yeah. wars and then they hired him because yeah. they're like oh fuck, yeah yeah great. he fixed the luke from yeah. the end of season That's one yeah so <sighs> this movie looks bad like it is very muddy it and is. it's hard to make out like it's, it's blue grays some orange yeah but like it's just there's not like a lot of contrast and it's very very dark and i thought it was just because modern theaters, they leave a lot of lights on sometimes, and it's part of a security thing and the anti-theft thing. Mm. So a lot of times if I see a movie that takes place mostly in the dark, it's hard to see. Uh, so I thought that was the issue, and then I tried like watching it on video. I'm like, this looks really bad. And it's the cinematographer from, from Arrival, which was really good. Huh. So they fired the directors and replaced them with Ron Howard. Because he was an old guy who was safe and were played by the rules. It's fun trying to guess which Ron Howard scenes are in the movie. Obviously, Paul Bettany, because mm -hmm. he was added afterwards. They replaced the other actor because it was going to be a CGI lion, man. What? Yeah. That's crazy. And then when they oh, decided man. they need to reshoot, they're like, we can't afford a CGI character. <laughs> uh. So uh, there was one scene where I'm like, oh, this is definitely a Ron Howard scene because Clint Howard's in it. And no one is putting Clint Howard in an A-list movie, especially Star Wars, unless it's being directed by his brother, Ron Howard. And who is he? In the movie, he's do there during like the fight. He's one uh, of the guys outside during that like uh, clip, that uh fight that they're watching. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, everyone loved what's his face as Lando. Yeah, Don uh, Donald Glover. I agree, he great. looked like Lando, but after I watched it like once or twice, I'm just like, I feel like he's just doing like an impression, like he's in a Saturday Night Live skit. Doesn't feel like a character. He said Han. Yeah. Uh, Amelia Clark is super forgettable in this. Kira. There. Is that her name? Yeah. It's like Q U I R A or something. Yeah, like that. She it's, does. It's like an apostrophe. She on does it. Terrace Cassie. That video oh, game. Oh yeah, that's right. Which we theorized because we did the review for Masters of Terrace Cassie or Cassie whatever for AVGN. While I think they might have been doing reshoots, I'm like, did we inspire that? That's uh, funny. I'm gonna feel bad if we inspired huh. that because no one else would reference Terrace it. That game Kasai. is famously horrible. No one likes it. And I guess uh, the main, the guy that's like Han Solo's like master, his like friend, I guess mentor. Woody Harrelson. Woody yeah. Harrelson. He kills Ayla Singh. Uh, like, uh, what's the Ayla, uh, the the big bounty hunter? That's like a big deal in the Clone Wars. She's like white and bald. And oh, like, I didn't know that. Yeah, they mentioned it. Uh, Ara Singh. Okay. They kill Ara Singh. Sorry. I hate that we have an origin to his gun. Like, I don't care where he got his gun. I did like the train heist. Yeah. Uh, Chewbacca is kind of just there. Yeah. I thought it was going to be more about their friendship, but it's not. It's about, like, him and Lando and Kira. Uh, fucking... I know you love the droid. Oh. Your favorite character. I hate L337. Because it makes me feel guilty about all the other droids. It's her name, Leet. Yeah. So the droids have personalities, so you kind of care about them when, like, Ewoks are shooting them with, like, electricity and stuff. So they're not just trash cans. They have a little personality. And then I guess Lawrence Kasdan's son who wrote this was trying to impress someone. He's like, what if they were all slaves? And we actually like call him out on it. And it's like, well, now 
you're making me feel like Luke was a slave owner. Yeah, like all these really characters like that. that we love are now slave owners. Like, what the fuck? Because, like, in A New Hope, they're like, we don't serve their kind here. And so, like, C3P was like, I'll go outside, I guess. Yeah. So, and really, Obi-Wan should be like, well, yeah, I don't think he drinks alcohol, so I yeah. didn't expect him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so that whole change, they're like, they're slaves now, they need to be uprised. I'm like, well, now it's hard to watch the other ones knowing that, because yeah. now I'm like, are the good guys the bad guys? Uh, but yeah, Solo... <laughs> are just, we the bad guys? Yeah. <laughs> so Solo's just very forgettable, and then they... Darth Maul. <sighs> the Kessel Run. The Kessel Run. They screwed up Kessel Run. But yes, Darth Maul. They screwed up Parsecs in the original movie. No one cared. And then this movie had to make it make sense. They didn't need to do that. And I, I like the idea that the Millennium Falcon was really nice with Lando owned it. Yeah. And I thought they were going to do a thing where like, oh, th this will explain it. Like years of Han Solo owning it. It looked like shit, but then it just turns to shit right away. At the end of the movie. Yeah. And then the whole like climax is Han learns to shoot first. But that's not in your current continuity. Fuck, I hate this movie. Yeah, I, don't I really like don't movie like this movie. I said, because L337 was one of the worst characters I've ever seen in a Star Wars film. I was like, in Rise of Skywalker, if I see the real Lando put on a headset and talk to her brain and the Millennium Falcon, I will walk out of the theater. I do not want to hear that character. I really don't like it. I also laughed when Lando showed up in the Rise of Skywalker. Like he literally didn't need to be there, yeah. but like I, I'm glad he was there. I will say, like, at least the characters are kind It's of only because Carrie Fisher died. Yeah. They were I will like, say, oh like, well, we need somebody. We need another legacy character to help. The us. characters at least have some kind of personality to them, unlike Rogue One, where they're all bland, but it doesn't save the film. It's terrible. Speaking of not saving anything, Rise of Skywalker. <laughs> This movie is a disaster. This is so bad. And like, Somehow so they, JJ returned. they, des <laughs> they <laughs> desperately bring JJ back who did not want to come back. Mm -hmm. They beg him to come back to fix things. I don't even know if JJ might've even hated Ryan Johnson. People are like, he changed things out of spite. I think a lot of that was like from the higher ups. They're like, you need to fix this. We fucked up. You need to fix this. He backed him into a lot of corners. So like it kind of forced him to yes. figure it out. But then he uses some of his stuff. Like he uses the force teleporting. So he obviously liked some of the things and that the he porgs? introduced. Porgs are, and the porgs. Yeah, porgs are in there. But this movie is abysmal. It is. It looks like shit. It's like the, the visual effects are good, but some of the camera movements look okay. like shit. What the fuck was that scene with fucking Kylo and his little fucking ship coming and then Ray flips over it for some fucking reason. And then he definitely like looks like he dies. Yeah, like, yeah. he should have died there. Yes. Uh, there's. And then the forest. Li by by like, the way, they like, fake kill I, didn't, I yeah. didn't catch on to this. I listened to a uh, Dick and Vito's commentary track on this. I, it, I didn't catch on. This whole movie is taking place within 16 hours. Yeah. yeah. That's fucking impossible. There's no way this is 16 hours long. Like this is there, a lot of shit happens. Uh, but they put the main characters together and it's like, yeah, but we never had them all together in the first place. Yeah, so like I can understand, okay, Finn and Ray, that's cool because they've yeah. been together. Finn and Poe. All three of them, and then the interaction between like Ray and Poe were kind of like button heads too, and it's just like yeah. we're supposed to like these. Because in the together? first movie, all the characters meet each other, and then they're in that like big action sequence. And then they're separated, and then we see them all together in the next movie. Like I said with the second movie, it should have been Finn stayed with Ray. Yeah. And then if they wanted Rose really bad, it could have been Poe going off with uh Rose and then Hold on. Hello? Calling with your help HQ. How are you today? I'm good. We're talking about worst Star Wars movie. What do you think is the worst Star Wars movie? I'm a uh, we specialize in replacement of windows, roofing, and siding. What did you think about them adding stuff in the windows on Cloud City in the special edition of Empire Strikes Back? Valid question. Great question. So let me ask you a few things, and then I'll transfer you to a specialist who can give you all the answers, okay? All the answers. Oh, good. All right. All right. So the specialist. Yeah, transfer you to the specialist. Okay. After these few questions, I'll transfer you right over to the specialist. Do you own your own home? No. Okay. 
I guess we'll never know. <laughs> that was 100% a robot. Yeah, it was a robot. 100% it was a robot. Uh, we had a robot called toward the Blair Witch one. That's my new gimmick. I just like, answered okay, the phone click. now. <laughs> they were like, that's a great question. No. <laughs> <laughs> the plot of this movie is somehow Palpatine returned. That's how desperate they were. Yeah. I hate Palpatine returning. What do you think? Like, I know we like Ian McDermott. Yeah, that's about it. Like, I just like Ian. That's it. And he sucks in this, by the way. He's, He's terrible in this. They don't even use him very well. Palpatine returning is so desperate. The whole point of Palpatine, he was, he was overconfident. That yeah. was the thing. I don't want him to have a backup clone or some backup plan. The thing was, he was overconfident. Luke calls him out on it. That's why it's so satisfying when he dies. <sighs> Over Your overconfidence is your weakness. Your faith in your friends is your own. So the fact that he just had a backup plan, which was maybe a clone, maybe magic, we don't know. They and won't the explain no clones. He has a jar of Snokes. With the pre-made with the pre-made dent in the head. And he created Snoke to corrupt Kyle. And then Why didn't he just who, So he made a clone that was Ray's dad, right? And then Ray's dad oh, fell in love with another lady? Wait, that was a clone. I thought he just made children the normal right? way. I just thought he got a, he got busy. The unnatural I way. I thought, yeah, I thought it was a clone. I'm, I'm almost positive it was a clone. I'm sure in and canon it def- it's and a clone, but I was watching him like, who did Palpatine <laughs> fuck? Holy shit, was it the bald lady who was on his anyway, council? And, and then <laughs> the clone yeah. defected for whatever reason. Then yeah. I guess met Ray's par- mother yeah. and then they got busy. So technically Palpatine did get busy. Yeah. So that's the thing. I wonder so, if he was like wrinkly or if he was like good looking, Ian. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. So Palpatine's back. He wants, he wants he wants <laughs> Ray. Since we want answers. I, I, he I wa- want answers, JJ. <laughs> he wants Who did he fuck? <laughs> he wants Mas Ray Kanata. for a mysterious <laughs> purpose. And then oh God. This is what pissed me off. Like j- Kylo Ren did the whole thing where I'm in charge of my own Dennis destiny. I don't need a leader. And suddenly he's puts like, the helmet back he's on. He's like, okay, you're my new dad. I have my helmet now. Why? Like that's uh, that was more interesting. Why that he was he, now the supreme leader. Why did he get a good boy sweater at the end? Oh god, don't, let's not even talk about that. <laughs> a what? Uh, a good boy sweater. Oh, he did get a good boy <laughs> sweater at the end. Sweater. Yeah. Just like, so need? Palpatine is gonna launch an attack. <laughs> he now has Death Star style lasers on regular Star Cruisers, and he has his own first order. Yeah, the Where final th- order. <laughs> that's a little on the nose, isn't it? Uh, the one new character that's with Finn is supposed to be Lando's daughter, but they, I guess, cut that out. I'm, I'm getting into that. Uh, so yeah, he's gonna blow up the whole galaxy, and they gotta stop him. Well, they gotta go on an adventure. And Leia's there. She died between films, so they're awkwardly using footage from Force Awakens, which was on the Blu-ray. So I know the scenes they're pulling from, which immediately I'm disconnected from this. Yeah. She should have just died between films. Open up with her funeral. Kylo Ren is now now the only they living. They could have brought back that music that they played during Padme uh, mm. Padme's funeral, or whatever, and had yeah. her just like with uh, with the dice. But now they with the dice. But now they could have the thing where like th- hire me, Disney. She <laughs> might have been the only one who could have connected with him and brought him back to light. Now she's gone, so he's totally irredeemable. But they're like, no, we got to have Leia in the movie. We killed Luke and Han. We need Leia in the movie. And then she dies, and then suddenly he's good boy. Yeah, so that's stupid. Uh, they they wheel in Lando, He's and like, I say what wheel we in because we were I, just good friends. I've seen Billy D. Williams at conventions. He cannot stand for long periods of time. Aww. So like that was in my head while watching it. I'm like, this is making me sad. Cult forty five. So now you have you're literally propping up an elderly man, and you're you're propping up a corpse of a woman. And like this just feels really tasteless, and I just and the I could forgive it if the movie was like entertaining and engaging me, but the movie's also really, really bad. Uh, they go to Burning Man. Remember when they go to Burning yeah, Man? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. On Tatooine, looking planet again. They fly now. They fly now. Oh, I, I didn't know if I was gonna be the first to say it. Damn, <laughs> that's good. They fly now. They fly now. They fly now. Yeah. They fly now. They fly now. They fly now. We get it. They fly now. Force healing. Mm. That is. That has been canon, but Mandalorian brought it in. That was weird. I, I'm okay because she has the Force books. Sure, the Force and books. It's like, oh, we forgot to mention Yoda had a nice. The cameo. sacred texts. Yoda had a cameo, and he was a puppet, probably enhanced with CGI because there are no real puppets. But anyway, I love um, his laugh. Except for the five million dollar Baby Yoda puppet, but yeah, yeah. 
Jeez. enhanced with CGI. Mm, uh, fair, enough, fair enough. I know someone who did the visual effects on Rise of Skywalker. Yeah. Uh, I can't yeah, yeah. tell. I have to look yeah. at it again. I can't tell if they use the uh, little animatronics that they had for Porgs from uh, uh, oh, Last, Last Jedi Jedi. or if it's CGI. I think it's CGI, it's but I have to look CGI really closely. So I want one of those animatronics. Ray finds out that she's a Palpatine. Somehow. Yes. Somehow she's a Palpatine. Somehow she's a Palpatine. She <laughs> finds this out on the Death Star. How does she get to the Death Star? Somehow she got to the Death she Star. She found a magic dagger that a Sith assassin had. Somehow. That did a lot of bad things. Yeah. Somehow. Unlike her lightsaber. By the way, when she touched Luke's lightsaber in Force Awakens, she got a force vision of his entire life. Somehow. Then she touched this dagger that killed her fucking parents. Nothing. Somehow. <laughs> so then she finds his ship. Somehow. Which still works. Somehow. <laughs> uh, and they go to, I guess, another moon of Endor where part of the Death Star crashed which our good friend Yoshi Vu worked on. And by the way, it's a lovely looking crashed Death Star. Yeah. Doesn't really make sense story-wise because I'm pretty sure that thing like was incinerated. That was actually part of uh, George Lucas' sequel idea was to have that scene. It seems but... like something you could, yeah. Uh, and it looks beautiful. Even if the scene we're watching isn't very so, good, it looks beautiful. So <laughs> this has been here for a while. Okay? Yes. Falling apart. But yes. still somehow that dagger's Matching up, and perfectly. she knew to stand on the right yep. section. To, it's like a fetch quest. It's a series of fetch quests. I hate um, it. There's the secret room off to the uh, side where there's sharp tooth ray. Yeah. Oh god. Yeah. So the previous movie was trying to do the whole like, you know, maybe not everyone's like fully good or bad. And you, there's like a wiggle room in the middle, mid ground, and it's like, no, if you're bad, you have sharp teeth and a red lightsaber. You hiss. Cool. Cool. Fuck, yeah. am I bad? Again, I, don't, I don't even like Last Jedi, but this is like, <laughs> like right, yeah. this is making me feel bad for Last Jedi yeah. fans. Yeah. The two of them that exist. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, the whole movie, if we sound like we're rambling, the whole movie's a mess. Yeah. And then Palpatine's plan doesn't make sense either because he finally gets Rey and he's like, I'm going to go into your body. I could just do that now. Yeah, and then after Kylo, and all the Sith people up in the like balconies, and, and they're hanging too. out, like they yeah. can pull up yeah. the house. And, like, and then after, <laughs> see how it turns out. It's fine. They're after like, they're like hookah chunko, yeah, hookah, hookah. yeah. And then after Kylo dies, and then he gets force healed, and then Leia dies. And they smooched for some yeah. reason. And then yeah. no, I'm talking about the previous death. And then and then he sees his ghost oh, that dad. One. His ghost dad's like, I love you, son. I'm not cutting my hair for this cameo. Uh, uh, I'm like, wait, Han Solo has the force now? How does that work? Uh, it's just a memory because he's not glowing. Oh, blue. wait. Uh, uh, yeah, I guess in that case, Kylo Ren forgave himself. Yes. <laughs> okay. Just yes. checking. So he forgave himself. And then and then uh, Ray went to act two to kill herself. And then Ghost Luke was like, forget everything I said. I love the Jedi. They're great. Take this lightsaber that I didn't throw. Yes, and That's another no lightsaber that no it. one knew I had. Also, here's my X-Wing. Even though the previous movie showed that I used parts of it to make my hut, it's now fully intact. Goodbye! Uh, my helmet isn't there. It's not a gross, icky seat to sit on because it's not been in the water for forever. It's terrible. So, like, then Palpatine's plan is, I'm going to go into you, and then Kylo shows up to fight the Knights of Ren, which were the biggest letdown ever. Oh I my was God. so upset. I thought like this movie would be like a power struggle between the Knights of Ren because maybe they don't recognize him as a leader or something. No, they're just guys with axes and He's they die. He's just standing there menacingly. Like there's like shots where they're like <laughs> just I did, staring. I did like the whole thing whatever, where they're surrounding him or whatever and then uh, Kylo gets the uh, lightsaber and he's just like, right, yeah, he's like do this. The Han Solo okay. All right, let's go. So then Palpatine's like, I'm going to go yeah, into you and then he's like, no, never mind. I suddenly found Found out that I could absorb both your power. I'm just gonna make myself young again. He's like, this is a better plan than I had originally. <laughs> He's like, you're a dyad in the force, and then I'm there, there going, what the fuck? He's like, that? I didn't read about that. What shit. the fuck's a dyad? That's not been mentioned. Also, the whole time this is happening, I'm like, I wonder what Finn has to tell Ray. He's got something to tell. You know her. what it is? You know what it yep. is? It's Ray. <laughs> uh, never gets, never gets explored. It was Wait, supposed to be nope. he was force sensitive. Yeah. Yep. Just cut out all the scenes. You yep. should have just had it in the second movie. You just cut out all that setup. And I made a little video about that, and I don't know why that would be the thing you tell Ray as you're dying. Yeah, it's bizarre. Yeah. Like, why would you be like, oh, Ray, I'm force sensitive. <laughs> <laughs> and then, like, never do anything about it. Like, Yeah, and then uh, apparently Palpatine, the most wonderful villain ever, who returned somehow, uh, and bragged about his return, and he felt great. He was going to be a lady, and then he decided not to be a lady. <laughs> a lot of things happened in the span of, like, 16 hours. He opened uh, the Raiders of the Lost Ark. He decides, I'm going to shoot my lightning at her lightsabers. 
It's worked well every every single time. And then they shoot back at him, and he should be like, "Oh shit! I better turn this off." <laughs> and he just keeps doing it, and he kills himself. Yeah. Rip. And now she's a Skywalker. They did the Iron Man thing, but with Ray. They're like, "I am Iron Man." Snap. I, I am, am all, all the, the Jedi. Jedi. Snap. She should have said, "I am every woman." I am oh, all the way every woman. woman. <laughs> uh, yeah, and then it ends with the horrible force ghost of Leia and Luke, and then she buries. Where the fuck was Ben? <laughs> yeah, she. Well, he was... literally just disappeared. Where was Anakin? <laughs> why did Darth Vader ever show up to tell Kylo, like, "Hey, don't do this. This is a bad." Apparently, idea. I can tell you why that didn't happen. Snoke said, "Well, because they didn't tell Ben that okay. his dad was his, his grandfather was Darth Vader," oh, okay. and so then when he finds out. Snoke was like, ah, he just got really moody when he saw his son dying. So yeah. it was just didn't really happen. Yeah. It was an accident. So anyway, <laughs> Movie's terrible. Uh, Movie's this terrible. movie is bad. This movie's bad. It's bad from the beginning. They had no clear idea going in. They were making all these compromises. It's trying to undermine the previous Dude, film. Have you seen some of the concept art for this though? Yes. Some of it yeah. looks so the good. Rever- the Colin Trevorrow script never would have got made because of Carrie Fisher's death. Yeah. But what he had in mind was still better than this. I don't know why they fired him. Finn leading like an ass- like a like assault on Coruscant mm-hmm. and everything. Oh, and they gave Finn too much to do. You like yeah, how they gave right. him a new girlfriend? Yep, and they gave uh, Poe a new girlfriend too. That was supposed to be Lando. Oh yeah, they gave oh, Poe a new sorry. girlfriend. Changing oh. around here. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> sitting different. They gave Poe a new girlfriend, but they gave you lesbians for one second that they cut out for the foreign release. Yep. We've talked about the films at length. Would you like to do your tier list? Johanna, would you like to go first? You came up with the concept of doing this tier list. Sure. Yeah, it's only right. S, which is the best, Empire. Obviously. A, A great is The Last Jedi. No. This is me. You got your own. I can write all. I got a red marker. I'll tell you why you're wrong. Okay, keep going. Ooh. And then A New Hope. Okay. B, I have Sith and Rogue One. Okay. C for is okay is The Force Awakens and Phantom Menace. Hmm. Not good is Clones, Solo, Return of the Jedi. <sighs> and F, scruffy looking nerf herder, is what we just talked about. It doesn't exist to me. Rise of Skywalker Rise is the, Skywalker. Rise of Skywalker is your worst. Okay, what, worst. how about you? All right. So for my S tier, um, mine's way smaller. This is not going to work. <laughs> yeah. For my S tier, I did Empire. Okay. Revenge of the Sith. A New Hope. In S? Yeah. It deserves the spot. Okay. Uh, spot. We're not asking for commentary. We're just <laughs> saying, right. Jesus Christ. Right. It deserves the going. spot. It, I found a, a perfect 3-3-3, three, 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 so I kind of just was like, yeah, okay. Okay. you get A. You okay. get A. Okay. Um, and also, it just it, we wouldn't have any of these if the A didn't work. So, yes. True. So, uh, or if S didn't work, yeah. sorry. A, I have Return of the Jedi. Okay. I have The Phantom Menace. Okay. Uh, maybe I would have swapped that. Uh, but anyway, uh, Rogue One, an A. Okay. Um, and B, I have, and I'll, yeah, and B, I have Attack of the Clones. I have the Clone Wars animated movie. And then I have uh, the the, uh, the Force Awakens. Okay. And, and C, I have Solo, Rise of Skywalker, The Last Jedi. Ooh, okay. And then what's? D, I have The Caravan of Courage. And the, and, 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 and the, uh, See, I the, the other one. What's F? What's F? Uh, there's no F. That so is Battle for Endor is not. Oh no, they're just on the same tier. Oh, they're on the same yeah. tier. I only I had I had fewer slots than you did. Okay, but. here's mine. All right, so wait, but which of those two, Caravan of Courage or Battle for Endor? What's the worst one? Oh, the second one, Battle Easy. for Endor. Yeah. And so also, you're Rise of Skywalker. You're Battle for Endor. Okay. Yeah. My S tier. Star Wars, and Empire Strikes Back, theatrical cuts. No. Yep, I'm doing it. A tier, Return of the Jedi, theatrical cut. B tier. New Hope, Special Edition, Empire, Special Edition. They're kind of fucked up, but they mostly work. C tier, Force Awakens. Uh, D tier, all the prequels and the, the Ewok movies and The Last Jedi and Rogue One. They have a good spread of like, They're all in the D tier. Yeah, I was going right? to say, what is your thing? They're Wait, all did you in even, the D tier. Yeah, you didn't even wow. have a B. <laughs> no, I wrote in the Special Editions because oh, okay. uh, they didn't have an option for them. And then the F tier, I got three. I can guess them. Return of the Jedi Special Edition. Okay, I can guess that one. Solo and Rise of Skywalker. And out of those three, I almost made it Return of the Jedi just because I do think that's a good film that is completely ruined by its special edition. 
but top to bottom, because Solo had an idea going in and then they changed it mm. later. Top to bottom, Rise of Skywalker is the worst Star Wars movie. I think a lot of my choices were built on the rewatchability of some of yeah. them. Because sometimes you like want to go back and just watch the dumb scenes mm. that you like. Yeah. And then um, like the nostalgia element is huge. Like yeah. I think that's the only reason that Phantom well, Menace is Return so of the high. Jedi Special Edition, I'm like personally offended by that. And then <laughs> Solo Solo was just like abysmal. Yeah. Like I'm like, wow, you really fucked this up. But Rise of Skywalker, I think, is like legitimately the worst one. Yeah. And bad. now this is where everyone sub unsubscribes because we didn't say Last Jedi. So thank you for watching our in detail discussion of the worst Star Wars movie ever made. Do you agree with our picks? Uh, which one do you agree with the most? And why is it me? Uh, remember to like, share, okay. and subscribe and call our voicemail line. Xander, where can people find you? You can find me at XF Plus on YouTube and TikTok where I'm uploading daily Star Wars content. Cool. I'm on Twitter, stuff like hearts. I also made a uh, nope, fans nope, link. Nope, 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 uh, nope. Don't go to that uh, thing. Don't look up stuff like hearts on any adult website. Fansly? What? You know, I wasn't allowed to talk about the one I had for, but anyway. See, maybe you should be a woman. Shut up. Uh, that is it <laughs> from us. Uh, happy anniversary, Attack of the Clone. Yeah. Yay. We're so free. We're and so free. <laughs> we will come back with another worst or best episode in the future because you guys seem to be enjoying them. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Check out our other videos and Patreon page.